Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Good evening and welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. Good to have you with us. My name is Dave Scott and very much appreciate you tuning us on in on this Friday night. All right. I got to get you on mute there, Marie, for one second because we are having feedback. And uh, just let me. All right. I don't know why that isn't working, but. Uh, we'll just do that for right now. Okay, let's say hello to everyone in our chat room tonight. We have race fan in the gold medal position, Derek Galloway with the silver. Penny Van was a nice bronze medal tonight. Hi, Michael Morris. Good to have you back. Michael Morris will be signing autographs after the show. Line up to the left of the studio, if you don't mind, to the left of the studio. Roy Boy, JSCO, Brown Dwarf, Laura Loves, Kevin What's going on? Hey, dog in Australia, the lovely Amy WC. Forrest Louie, good to see you. Hi, Mama Susan. And Scrub It Up Dub, how you doing? Dutch Hank, Val, Southwest Pennsylvania, what's happening? And there is Kurt M. and Zochito, Paez, Richards. How are you, my friend? Zochito will be signing autographs after the show as well. Line up to the right of the studio, if you don't mind, to the right of the studio. Jessica McCreary, looking good. And Arrow, good to see you. Millennium, my man. Doug Shelby is here. The Doug Shelby has arrived, which means we can officially start this show. All right, continuing on. Obi Flett and Vin Man, nice to have you both here. And Area 51, Marv Graham, Christine Lynn, thank you all for joining us. Zen One, Jenny White Bear, good to have you here. Vashti Impaler and my man Obi kicking in. A nice super chat right there, my friend. Thank you so, so much, Obi. Love you, man. And uh, hope you're doing well. Peppa H., Howard S., Jerry O'Brien, good to see you all. National Memorial. Steam Train Mark, thank you for letting me know I am alive in the future. Thomas Rock, Warden Dragon, how are you? Nikki in Seattle, A.A. Ron Baca, and Debster, what's happening? Good to see you. And uh, let us move on here. Jessica S- and who else is joining us? Paramarv, Mexi97, good to have you back. And we are caught up so far tonight. And uh, Marie Cisneros is our guest tonight on the show. We're talking everything from paranormal and supernatural encounters to aliens and history. And it's going to be a great, great show. I've been looking forward to this one all week long. And uh, I hope you have too. So. Okay, this isn't good. Marie, where you're getting major feedback. I need you to... Uh, I don't know. Oh, where am I here? Oh, okay. Now, it's not from you, Marie. That's from me. That's from me. I had Facebook unmuted. That's what it was. I had Facebook unmuted. Ah, oh, what a... Zero I am sometimes. All right. James Weston, Stu Gerson, Mark Sanchez. Nice to see you all. And uh, yeah, we got to get the radio side going. Hold on. You know, sometimes I just want to see some of those uh, stories on Facebook uh, and videos and everything. And Brian Bowden and the crypto guru sent me a video. So I unmuted Facebook. And that's where I get the feedback. Hmm. 
Got to stop that. Got to stop that. Okay, uh, who else is joining us? Alien Critter, nice to see you again. And did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? I just want to make sure here. Mm, nope, don't think so. Guy Calgary, good to see you. And we got about 30 seconds. Remember, our story is open on our website, spacedoutradio.com, so you can check all the fun swag out that we have there. And if you're new here, hit subscribe, ring that bell. And if you haven't already, get, do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up or thumbs down. And don't forget after the show to leave a comment as well. Nick Adkins, good to see you. Hi, Lee the Bee. And here we go. Horns up. From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on Odyssey Radio, TalkStream Live, and KPNL. All of our archives are free. Join us at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. You can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the news, wire, check out our swag as well. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by visiting Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. we got a great show of action tonight. Marie Cisneros is going to join us here momentarily to talk all things paranormal, supernatural, ufological, and everything in between. Then in hour number three, we got a great story from Steve Stockton from Among the Missing. Then right after that, little Timmy Senor will round out our week with the UFO reports. Marie Cisneros is a journalist, professional astrologer, ufologist, numerologist, and ULC minister. She has an AAS and BS in medical sciences and worked in the med medical field for more than 25 years. Her personal interests include acrylic painting, mixed media art, jewelry design, and crafting. She is also a chief researcher for her own company called Cygnus Research. She used to be a UFO field investigator for more than 10 years with MUFON, investigating hundreds of cases between Michigan, Kansas, Oregon, and Montana. And we're glad to have her here. Now, uh, for our video side on YouTube, we are having some video issues. But Marie Cisneros, good to have you on Spaced Out Radio. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. How are you? Well, oh, thank you. Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Pretty excited about this. Me too. Me too. You know, I mean, you are somebody who kind of runs the gamut of playing into this weird world that we call the phenomena. How did this go for you? How did you get started? Oh, well, it's been a pretty much a lifelong interest, but I think that it's, it pretty much started back in the early 70s, you know, when I got really interested in um, doing research and just learning more about the, you know, UFOs and, um, you know, and what they are, probably because of my own experiences with um, seeing UFOs. Ever since I was young, I think the first one was I, I was like 10 years old. So, but um, even I guess even before that, I was interested in things like ghosts and and learning all about the you know the strange things that go on or people say they go on um, in the world. So you have seen UFOs since nine, ten years old. What is that like when you're a kid at that age seeing something fly up in the sky? How did that 
you know, what did you think back then? Like, I didn't see my first UFO till I was like 21, 22 years old. I know how I reacted then. I was freaking out. How did you react at 10 years old? Um, well, actually, I think that was around the same time that Betty and Barney Hill had had their experience. And so I actually kind of knew about it. And maybe I, you know, maybe I was just interested in, you know, things like that from a very younger age. But so when I saw it, I answered that it was um, that there was someone in that craft because it was quite a close um, sighting. It was probably less than 500 feet. So, you know, looking up in the sky, I I was quite sure it, there were windows and maybe there was some some sort of being in there. So I was pretty intrigued. I actually tried to, you know, maybe telepathically communicate with it. <laughs> Why not? And and how many UFOs did you see as a child? Was that just the one, or was it something that kicked off a lifetime of UFO adventures? Oh, pretty much that's what kind of kicked off, you know, a lifetime of, you know, seeing UFOs and, you know, having a few, uh, some paranormal experiences, you know, throughout my life. Uh, I think I saw several of them, and then uh, I don't remember seeing, you know, having any other experiences like that until, you know, later on when I was in my 20s. Do you um, believe then that, that, that you one were was, targeted? I think the one when I was younger was pretty significant. Do you believe you were targeted? Um, I, um, I, after doing the research and learning more about um, the subject of ufology and the alien phenomenon phenomena and uh, I think perhaps you know going by other stories and other uh, reports that I have done in MUFON that there are certain families or people generationally uh, do have those experiences and even people that they are associated with them. So I think it's kind of more, it's not just me, other people in my family, you know, have seen UFOs and, uh, um, or having like strange dreams where, you know, they think that's, it might not have been a dream. <laughs> so I mean, that's kind of, uh, I don't know if it's so much targeted, I guess that's a possibility. You know, it's targeted, but uh, whether I'm a contactee or, or experience or, um, you know, that's also a possibility too. I think it's all a possibility when you're, when you're dealing with something like this, we don't really know the, all the answers. Yeah. The answers are what we are all kind of seeking from an experiential level. And it seems like over the last number of years, we've seen ufology kind of take off into more of a political realm than an experiencer's realm, you know, but I, I still believe strongly that the experiencers are going to have a big say in what's going on in the future with ufology. I mean, how, you've dealt with a lot of experiencers. For people who may not understand what's going on with them, how do you feel about telling, you know, how you dealt with experiencers and what you saw them go through? Well, I think in a way, just because, you know, I have, you know, I have um, done a lot of reports with that, although truthfully, I can't say that I haven't had a lot of experience in uh, through MUFON with um working with those people, you know, there's actually kind of like a separate group for that. Um, more of what I did was doing the reports. Although, you know, during research, I've, you know, always looked into some of these cases because they're fascinating. But I think it's something that um, you have to be understanding that things like that can 
cause a lot of serious issues. You know, even, you know, over the lifetime, a lot of people have experienced things like, you know, recurring bad dreams or even to the point of having PTSD from them. So I have actually had um, certain, you know, some experiences and whether or not it had anything to do with, um, you know, any, any sort of paranormal uh, experiences, they were strange enough to where it might have been. And that actually caused some problems, you know, that I had with PTSD. So, I mean, I do understand that, you know, it can be, and it can be very hard and other people about that because they say, oh, well, it's just, you know, it's kind of just nonsense, you know, it could be, you know, you're, it's coming from someplace else and not any experience that you had, you know, as being an experiencer. Well, I, I fully agree. So, in I your that opinion, makes sense. I guess that's kind of like, was it? Well, it makes a lot of sense. I want to ask you, because you've also dealt a lot with paranormal uh, adventures and hauntings and, and ghosts and spirits. What's the biggest difference you have seen between, you know, those who are experiencing extraterrestrial phenomena and those experiencing paranormal phenomena? what's the what's the difference in them or yes um well i think in a way sometimes they actually con connect they're actually connected but um i think in a way that if you were an experiencer it would be i mean from going by a lot of the other you know um reports and that and incidences i think it's more can be more of a lifetime thing I mean, I think if you see, maybe if you see a spirit or, um, or you think you see a ghost, it could be a, maybe an isolated incident. But when you're dealing with something as being an experiencer, that can be your whole lifetime. There are people that say that that, that has happened to them their whole life from very early on. So I would think that would have a very major impact you know, in their life. Okay. So what kind of, you, you, see it, you know, why you're seeing it or what it was. What kind of impact uh, can this bring on to a person? Um, as an experiencer, I think that, um, they tend to have deal with um, like nightmares, you know, reoccurring dreams, um, you know, things that, or anxiety, a lot of the things that go along with the PTSD. Um, I, I do have PTS, PTSD and it, actually the cause was never really made clear to me, but it really came into focus for me when I had the um, kind of a, I, I guess you could call it an experience, but it was actually in a dream state. And this was from 2015. And it was such a vivid, um, strange, bizarre dream that I don't want to sleep for three days. And so when I did end up speaking with someone about it, and they said, well, maybe, you know, it's just from something else. It was just brought on by the PTSD. I think, well, I didn't really have a problem with, with that, you know, up until then. So, but I mean, it caused, you know, problems with sleep, um, anxiety, um, actually at the time feeling that I wasn't safe in my own home. And I think a lot of experiences do feel that. It's kind of like you don't feel safe in your own home, where, where, which is, you should be. You know, she, you should feel safe there because that's a sanctuary. Very true. I fully agree with, with what you're saying there. And, you know, the idea behind, you know, what is a ghost? What is a spirit? What is an alien? What are cryptids? What, what are these creatures we are, you know, tracking down throughout the entire phenomena? Have you ever just sat back and and try what to about experiencers pardon me mm. 
Marie, can you hear me? I'm sorry, part of the... No, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Okay, when you, when you look at uh, all of the ghosts, the aliens, the spirits, the cryptids, the you know, the monsters that are roaming around there's, you know, it always makes me wonder about where the phenomena or what the phenomena is all about. Do you, or have you ever sat back and just kind of relaxed while having a cup of tea or something and wondering, you know, where did this all come from? Oh yeah. Yeah. Many times, you know, I, I wonder about a lot of it where you know where they originate from but i think maybe the you know we are a big we're a big planet and we're a big universe so in maybe even multi-universes you know there's theories on that too so maybe differences of you know maybe some of them are from other you know interdimensional or as in the case of ghosts, there are theories about whether they are actually thought forms or just maybe imprints on the environment. Because I think there's been some, you know, a lot of work done with that, or that they could be just, you know, parts of, I guess, thought forms, you know, based on, out, of the, out of the subconscious. I think when it comes to Bigfoot, I mean, there's even theories out there right now that Bigfoot is actually um either interdimensional or he is a, some sort of a ghost entity or even um kind of like a guardian of the woods which are kind of like similar to maybe um dog man and the others, or whether they are um they're an actual physical creature i think a lot of people you know a lot of the um uh, researchers do they they're looking at them as an actual physical um, so I guess there's a lot of theories on you know and all of that stuff and I guess you know that's kind of just yeah. my own theories on some of it and some of the things I'm looking into for the book there's always something to write there's always a story that is out there that are um, that are you know intriguing topics it's not just about the character of the monster or the being that you're trying to write about it's also about the stories and the effects that everything kind of has on on people and the experiences that they are having on a daily basis you know with six minutes to go here before we go to break at the bottom of the hour do you have you know a particular story that has really stuck out with you regarding you know ghosts or spirits marie did you hear you my know, now did you hear my question are uh, pretty intriguing um and have me kind of looking more into um, I think some of the stories that I'm working on now for um, this current book, Haunted, Haunted Nuevo, you know, has me really intrigued and in wanting to dig deeper into, you know, some of the, the story. And that's about um, a story about a, the apparition of a black dog jumping through the window of a family's home. So everyone that sleeps in a certain room sees an apparition of a black dog well throughout you know folklore and mythology black dogs are associated with death so i think you know there's so much more to that story you know obviously what that would do to a family having to try to sleep in that room every night i can just imagine i can just imagine uh what that would be like i mean is, is it a matter of being almost haunted or tortured by these creatures? Well, I, I think that would be pretty much, I don't know if it's a haunting, and I think that was 
is the big question with something like that is that is it or is it uh, a portent of some sort of a you know a premonition that something would happen in the family but i mean it's for any indication it really wasn't it was that if they left the shade open this was the story is that if they left the shade open they would have a go a dream a nightmare of a well, dog jumping through the windshade have any problems and it was more than one person that had experienced that so you know it's just like it definitely had me really wanting to know you know more about that because that's it doesn't really fit into a lot of the ghost stories that i've heard you know it doesn't really even fit in with the motif of the entity of the black dog because they're often seen you know, to as a premonition of death in the family or to some other danger, you know, that's going to happen. So I think there's like, you know, there's there's a lot to that story, even though it wasn't a very detailed or long story, you know, that was related to me. But that is that is a very, very. But I think that's a, you know. that was probably one of the best ones I think that I've heard so far. Yeah, that's a very tough story to try and uh, and, and and get to it as we are kind of battling through some audio issues here on Spaced Out Radio tonight with our guest Marie Cisneros and Marie uh, for you, you know, as an experiencer of this phenomena, uh, you, we know you saw UFOs. Did did you uh, have you ever had a paranormal experience? Um, I've had a few experiences that are, yeah, kind of like a little bit out there. <laughs> um, I don't know what realm of the paranormal they would fit into. Uh, some of them would be considered me getting kind of time loop, which is, you know, kind of a, a strange thing because it was, um, it actually happened, um, I wasn't alone at the time, but it seemed like we, my family, some several members of my uh, my family had, and I were had been traveling to Mississippi, and when we got close to the town that we were there, and we only had one turn to go, and we knew that we knew the turn off, we saw the sign, but every time we would go down it, we would be right back on the same highway. <laughs> And this happened like three times and it was like midnight and we're saying like, what is going on? We keep saying the same building. And then suddenly the, after 20 minutes or so we go down the same exit and there we are headed towards the town where we're going to. And it's just like looking at that, it's like, what happened? You know, what was that all about? Till I started kind of reading into this idea of, a time loop, you know, it's like, is that what happened? I mean, I, I didn't think at the time that, you know, anything, it, you know, that's what it was. We just knew that it was all very strange, you know, um, was maybe we were all just tired. I don't really know. I mean, I guess that would be one, you know, very simple theory, but <laughs> we knew for sure that we kept going on the, the same exit, but just brought us right back to the same highway. <laughs> There wasn't that many exits in Mississippi near South Haven. <laughs> Marie, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to go to break. But that's here at, at the them. bottom of the hour. Spaced Out Radio continuing with paranormal and supernatural talk all night long right here on Spaced Out Radio. Marie, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but uh, we're going to have to figure out this audio issue. Um, it's really not coming through very clean. And um, I'm having a lot of troubles 
uh, we're getting a lot of dead air on 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 this side. Yeah, I, Marie, I just I just lost you on this end too. We're gonna. I'm I'm going to have to um, like when I when I get you everything is great and i can hear you and then your your signal starts really cutting out and speeding up again um I, i'm trying to figure out what to do here if we should reschedule and maybe work on the audio and video for for another time where i can better represent you yeah yeah um yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with it either. Um, I This is the first time I've used this StreamYard. I really don't, I've never had a problem with Zoom. And so yeah, I, I really don't have a clue what's going on either. So. Well, why don't we call it the night on this one? I got to continue on with the radio show. But... Yeah. Um, um, We'll get you rescheduled, okay? Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. I will try to okay. see if I can find a different, um, make a different device <laughs> at least to use. All right. Possibly. All right. Thank you, Marie. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate Bye. it. We'll talk soon. That pisses me off because I think she has a lot of great stories here. A lot of great stories. I was just so frustrated by the audio there. Um, I No, Derek, you weren't hearing her just fine. None of us were hearing her just fine. Okay. I have a standard that I have to keep up to and... Uh, with the radio stations, and we weren't even hearing 50% of what she was saying. Uh, she had some sort of delay going on. So, um, damn it. I was really looking forward to this one. All right, so this is what we're going to do because we are live radio and we do have to change on the fly. All right, I'm going to be taking questions from you, the audience. Uh, coming on, I'm going to give you guys the link. And if any of you want to join me and talk about uh, what's going on or tell me your stories, well, that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, the link is uh, right here. If you want to join me, I'm going to pin it uh, on uh, the top here. Let's have a good show here. We got 90 minutes to go and uh, let's make a, a good show happen here. We don't usually do open lines. This is your chance to step on up and be a part of the show. All right. Remember, no swearing, no COVID talk, no uh, politics outside of UFOs. All right. So come join me. I never do this. This is your opportunity. Tell me your story and what we're going to do. And what we're going to chat about. This is all on you. The link is pinned at the top of the chat room. Rob G, if you want to hop on, you can, even though you're my guest on Monday.
You can type out your questions, too. If you have any questions, you don't want to come on the air, type them on out. Absolutely. Second half hour of Spaced Out Radio is now underway. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Dave Scott. We got a great show right here for you. Reminder to all of you that if you missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the news wire, check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. Now, unfortunately, I had to say goodbye to my guest, Marie Cisneros. The internet connection that she had was, it was god awful, to, to be blunt. And that's not her fault. That's not our fault. Just one of those nights where the internet was acting up. And I felt really bad, but during the break, I had to make the decision because it was getting a little too hard to to understand with what she was saying. So we're going to connect with our audience up until the third hour here. We got about 90 minutes of audience interaction with us. I never do this. I never, ever do this. But I'm going to. I'm going to right now as we are going to open up the lines to you. And and here's a question I want all of you to ponder, okay? This is a question I want all of you to ponder. And that is, how do you feel about this new plan that's going to be presented July 26th about UFOs? And... How realistically possible it is that President Joe Biden, some call him Sleepy Joe, could be the disclosure president. I don't know if he would be the right guy. Look, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Canadian. Okay, I don't know what's worse right now. But the one thing that I'm very unsure of is whether or not Joe Biden could be the disclosure president. I've been thinking about this the last couple of days. How do I feel about it? Where is this going? I don't know. Leave your comments in the chat room or on Twitter at hashtag spaced out radio. I'm curious your thoughts. All right, let us go to Deb from SAC here. Deb, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Hi, Dave. I'm very well, and I see that you're doing well despite uh, technical difficulties, and you have the patience of a saint. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Oh, you are way too kind, way too kind. How are you doing, my dear? (laughs) I'm super good. I'm enjoying a, a milkshake, and um, it's hot here in Sacramento. It's finally starting to cool down a little bit, and just, you know, chilling today, went swimming, trying to beat the heat, got the AC. I just turned my AC off, though, so that I could hear you, and I wouldn't have any background noise, so all oh, is nice. well. Well, before we get to your story or your question, what kind of milkshake? Yes. What kind of milkshake? Oh, Strawberry. Oh, a woman of my heart. A woman yes. of my heart. Oh, what a <laughs> do for a dairy queen. I, a milkshake right now. Mm. Mm. My I'll, favorite. I'll, I'll stick to water because, uh, you know, it's helping me get a little thinner than that milkshake would. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to treat yourself once in a while. So true. Do you have a story for us tonight that you would like to share, or do you have a question for us? I have a story, but I wanted to comment um, with your question first, which is, you know, what do we expect from the latest hearings? And um, my my comment is I don't expect anything from either side. I think both sides are corrupt. They've had information 
back in 2013 when they had the citizens hearing. Uh, they were every single member of Congress, not just the ones on the panel that were retired, were given um, tons of information, DVDs, all kinds of things, and they never did anything with it. So with all that information presented to them over five days, that Steve at Bassett hosted and organized that whole thing. If they couldn't show any interest back then, I tend to think that this is all a dog and pony show. The longer I'm in this community, the more skeptical I become, the more questions I have, but I'm not giving up on always, you know, seeking um, answers, paying attention to the good information and shows like yours. And that's how I feel about it in general. That, you know what? I, I, I'm praying it goes different, Deb. I'm praying mm -hmm. it goes different. Uh, but, you know, let's get to your story because I do have other people that need to come in here too. And But I, I want to know, tell me, tell me your spooky story. Well, mine's not spooky, but I did want to share, and I've shared this before on another on another channel, but my first time, my first UFO sighting was way back when I was 15 years old. I was sleeping in on a Saturday morning. I looked out my, or I was just kind of gazing out my window, and I saw something flying by that I'd never seen before, and the only way I can describe it is that it looked like a giant Q-tip. It was silver. Each end, which you would think of as a swab, was blinking like a lamplight. And I jumped up. I was like, what the hell is that? And um, ran out and saw it. And then I went, you know, to go look for a camera. And of course, I had a camera. It didn't have film in it. So I was screaming. And my sister, go, my sister comes running out. She goes, I go, look at that. Look at that. And we both witnessed it. She goes, let me call KLIV. And that was a station in San Jose where I lived. And so we called them. And they said, yeah, we're tracking it right now. We're on the line with Mount Hamilton and they're tracking it. And they said, and we'll announce if we find anything, do you want to hold on? And we did. And then they got back on the line after about 10 minutes. They said, we just, you know, hung up with Mount Hamilton. They were tracking it and it, they had it on radar and it, boop, it just flipped out and they lost it. So at least I had a witness with me that saw it and, you know, uh, a credible entity, you know, the radio station and Mount Hamilton had it on radar. So it really did happen. I know I wasn't going crazy. And that was my very first sighting. And I've never been the same since. Wow. I mean, your, your story is compelling, Deb. It really is. I mean, I've heard so many people explain how that one encounter, that one sighting that they've had has really changed their entire perspective of life. And, you know, good on you for doing something about it, okay, and investigating it for yourself because I don't think a lot of people do that. Maybe they're too scared. They want to forget about it because of whatever reason or, or belief that they have. But good on you for, for trying to chase it down and, and, and keeping your voice known that you want to know answers because that's, in reality, what we all want, Deb, is we want answers. And I can tell you're that way too. Oh, you bet. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll let you go. I know you have other people, but thanks for taking me in and letting me talk, Dave. And um, I'll, I'll say good or not good night, but I'm going to bounce out here. All right, Deb. Thank you from Sacramento, California. We love you around here and thank you for your love. Love you support. back, sweetie. Take care. All right. We got Mr. Rob G from the social dig. Hey, good. That man's red chin hair is fantastic. I'm so jealous of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Robbie, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, you can hang out with me on the air tonight. I have okay, no problem. Yeah. With that. But I'm going to I'm gonna say, I don't want to know a darn thing about your stories. Okay, okay because definitely. It, be, and here's the reason why, audience, is next week, Rob is going to be a guest on this show. And I want to make sure that he doesn't spill any stories tonight because we got a full show to do with him next week. Exactly. Where we where we can't have that happen. So you let's bring in a caller here while we're here. Let's go to Nancy Thames. Hello, Nancy. How are you? I'm not sure if you can hear me because I somehow the screen's not working. <laughs> you sound beautiful. Oh wow. And you look beautiful too because you're on camera on our YouTube channel. Well, I can't even see that. So I'm I'm in my pajamas, but that doesn't matter. So, yeah, this is fun. Yes. Do you have a question? Do you have a story no. you want to tell us? Well, no, I just really, I, I like to talk about 
extraterrestrial. So I just thought, well, what the heck? I'll give it a go. But have you ever, um, seen, it? Have you ever yes. seen it? Again? Yes, I have. I am a contactee lifelong, and I feel it's a personal mission of mine to help people, assist people, or assist humanity into um, disclosing um, ET to us. Tell me about your ET encounter. Oh, wow. It, um, this is going to be bizarre, and I wish I could see what I look like, or I don't know why I can't see anything, well, but anyway. I the good part about it is our podcast and radio audience cannot see you. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it's been a lifelong uh, ordeal for me. Um, when I was little, it wasn't scary because I just thought it was fun and games. And then as I got older, um, teenager and things like that, and started watching things on TV and uh, being told that I couldn't talk about it and things like that uh, with my family, then I started getting scared. So uh, it took me a long time, and they were very patient with me. And it, was, it wasn't until my 20s when I realized, okay, it's time to take this serious. And, you know, off and on, I would pay attention to it. Then other times I would put it on a back burner. But um, finally, as I got older, um, in my fifties, I decided it is time, time to, to take this serious. And at that point, I really, um, didn't have any reason not to. So I understand a lot more about my experience now. So it, it's just been a very long road, but a good road. And I have nothing but kind things to say about ET. Mm. Which ETs were you dealing with? Well, um, Grays, the Elders, uh, and there were some, I've met a reptilian, only one, uh, met an aquatic being, uh, several different things. Um, it's kind of like, it's really hard to explain, but sometimes it feels like you're living two lives. You have your nighttime life with ETs. And then you have your daytime and it's really, you know, it's hard to balance at times, but I have come to terms with it and I'm at peace with it now. And it's just, um, you really can't explain something like this to other people. It's something that you really have to experience to understand. And it's, it's not an easy thing to understand um, the technology you know, everything's just nothing like the way it is or how we've been raised or what we've been told. Everything is so different. And it's it's but it's very interesting. And I think that we all have a lot to look forward to as this disclosure progresses. And I think it will. Rob, if you have any questions for Nancy, please feel free to ask. No, I mean, I agree with everything she's saying there. I have the same outlook uh, on, you know, I'm a very humanity-focused person as well. So what she's saying definitely resonates with me for sure. Hi, Rob. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, like I stated, uh, with the humanity part of that, I just really resonate with that. I'm pro-humanitarian as well, and... Uh, I look past disclosure, um, past the, the whole UFO, are they real? And, and I'm more focused on how we evolve as uh, humans in humanity, you know, from that point forward. Yes. I don't know if you agree. Yes. And I think the problem is people do not understand. You hear all the horror stories, but here's an example. When we take our children or ourselves even sometimes to the doctor, we don't like it. We're a little fearful of it. We don't understand it. We don't like it. Well, when ET comes to visit us, it is not anything weird or wrong. They are doing checkups, exams. They're here to check on us and to see if we're okay, how we're evolving. And the problem is a, a lot of times the fear just People just can't deal with it. And I was that way. So I understand totally, you know, but 
I have changed. I have evolved. I have gained spiritually and I understand so much now. So that's where I feel like I fit in is I am. My goal is to help people understand that it is not a fearful thing. We would be dead if they meant us harm. We would not be having this conversation right now. And, um, it, you know, there are different beings and we're different. So they're trying to get to know us mm. and they're very curious about us. And we are interesting as, you know, we're very interesting. Yeah, you, you, you'd you been perfect. We uh, just did a show earlier today uh, regarding alien contact and then what's the game plan. And we posed some of those questions. If, uh, if this, what would you do? Or if this happened to be um, alien invasion or a malevolent uh, meeting versus if this was alien visitation with a benevolent uh, meeting. So from what I hear you saying, uh, from your experience, these ETs appear to be to come in peace. They are here in peace and they're curious about us and they're trying to get to know us. And regardless of what people, the horror stories and stuff, the, the, they are curious. They give us time with me. Sometimes they would appear to me in an image, not of their self, but an image in my mind that I was comfortable with, but it was an image that I knew that the person that I saw was not in the room with me. So it was strange enough that I knew it was them and not the person I was seeing, but also it was comforting to me because they are patient and they are understanding and they know that we have all these fears and things. And I've seen them do this many, many times. And like I say, it's really hard to explain, but I am going to try my best to help people to understand this. That is awesome. Nancy, I'm going to send you back to your uh, listening post so that way you can enjoy the rest of the show. And uh, thank you so much for ringing on in and, uh, telling us about your experience. Very much appreciate it. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Nancy. Nice to see meet you too. Bye-bye. And you know, one of the things, uh, Rob G from the social dig, uh, coming on in here, one thing that I have noticed about this entire quest that we see the government going on and people going on podcasts, YouTube channels, radio shows going on about is I think we're forgetting about regular everyday people like you, like me, like everybody out there who is having those personal experiences that they cannot explain, that they cannot right. understand, you know, what has upset uh, the apple cart of their happily boring life. You know, I mean, nobody's really asked for this, Rob. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, listening to an experiencer like that, I mean, I, I want to hear more. It's, uh, very intriguing to hear the uh, personal experience of someone who has come in contact with these ETs. I mean, I have so many other questions to ask uh, because uh, from my understanding, there's different species. Um, and, you know, one of the biggest things I think we think of is what is their intent? And I hear from a lot of experiencers that they're here with, with good intentions um, and you know, it's, it's, it's a rabbit hole. You could definitely jump down. And I think the experiences are, are definitely key, uh, to understanding the big picture, because like I say, a lot of this focus on the government is, uh, is more on, are these things real? But none of the questions that we really need answered, like, why are they here? Uh, you know, how, how are we going to deal with them going forward? Those questions won't be asked, answered by the government. It'll be answered by experiencers like Nancy and like Deb. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's great to hear from them. And I think they have a lot to give and provide to this conversation. I think they do, too. But the question is, how much of that conversation is going to be allowed? And when are we as a as a government, uh, you know, with government officials and everybody, how are they going to be mature enough 
to be ready for that conversation. Look, this isn't about, you know, and the sad part for me, I don't know how you see it. We, we've got about four minutes before we got to go to break, Rob, but I don't know how you see it or how our audience sees it. But the, the thing that I think we're going to experience when the experiencers start to come out of the woodwork, because that's the next part of the story after Aliens, how much airtime is Whitley Strieber and anal probing going to get? You know, because they're going to look for the angle, Rob. They're going to look for the angle to make fun of this subject. They don't want us to be real. They don't want these. I mean, look at Neil deGrasse Tyson. A scientist is supposed to be open-minded to the possibility of anything is possible. Because the minute they close it off, they're not scientists anymore. Okay? Science is ever-evolving. And here he goes on a podcast recently and absolutely starts, you know, saying aliens aren't here. You know, these people who are having experiences are are, are just having uh, mental issues or right. or dream, uh, lucid dreams or whatever it may be, vivid imaginations. That isn't true. This is something that that we have going on in this world. Yeah, I, I talked about this earlier uh, on my show, and one of the one of the, the example that I give, you know, when you have people from the outside who are just touching the subject for the first time, or you have skeptics, hard skeptics that don't believe any of this stuff is true, when they first come into this subject, my thing is is that we can't hit them with the deep stories uh, that we have, even though they're true stories, but we can't introduce it to them in that way. It's almost like I give the example of like, if you're meeting someone that you intend on courting um, and you know, when you, when you're going through that first period with them, you don't bring them all the weird uh, you show your best foot, you know, you give them a little bit. And then once you get to know that person, then you hit them with the weird. And I think that's, what's going to have to happen here. Um, We're going to have to address, you know, with those type of people, the fact that these things are in the sky, they are here. Once we can get them to understand that, then we can open them up to the deeper conversation, which is, you know, a lot of the experiencer stories and the abductions and things like that. Cause I think uh, if you hit them with that right off the bat, that they will make fun of, you know, the story, that's just, that's how it's been. It's the stigma. So I think we Absolutely. have to ease them in. And, you know, with one minute to go here, I do want to say this. I don't want it to become a another South Park type adventure. Because remember, when South Park started, their first ever episode was about making fun of Whitley Strieber and the anal probing, where Eric Cartman... And I'm not saying this to make fun of the subject, but this is reality where the cartoon character, Eric Cartman had a satellite coming out of his butt because it was placed mm-hmm. there by the visitors as they called them back then on South park. That was the first ever South park episode was making fun and mocking Whitley Strieber. And I'm not trying to put down Whitley Strieber at all. He's the only book I've never finished communion. Mm-hmm. Right. But I really hope that when aliens and extraterrestrials become part of the conversation, that we're not leaning on Whitley Strieber alone as the only experiencer to make fun of, because that's what the mainstream public will do. It's unfortunate, but it's true. So, Rob, you're going to stick around? You want to stick around? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Rob G. from The Social Dig is here. We're taking audience questions whether they are typed out in our chat room on YouTube or whether they join us with the link that we have provided. Come on in. It's an open night here on Spaced Out Radio. We will return with hour number two. What's on your mind? Paranormal, supernatural, ghost, Bigfoot, aliens? Tell us about it right after this. All right, Mark, I do see you there, Steam Train Mark. I'll bring you on right after we get back from break. Uh, Rob G., I'm going to send you back to the green room here. Yep. 
and old Davey's going to go take a break here. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Robbie G, what's happening? Yes, sir. Hey, 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 hey. I may have to hire you. I got a phone call from Tim at the, in the uh, during the break here, and he's having huge issues with his audio and video tonight too. Hmm. How the mind sound is okay? You're beautiful, man. Okay. Good. Good. You're beautiful. 
Yeah, I don't know. I uh, did the show earlier, and I, I watched it back, and I heard a little buzzing, and I didn't know if it was. We, we had Tom King on as well, and yeah, I didn't know if it was from my audio. Yeah, Fantastic yeah. Fantastic hair, that Tom King. Great hair. <laughs> Mr. Tom King uh, would love to get with you, uh, you know, potentially be a guest. I don't know if, that, if that's yeah, a thing. I I got to get him on. He had, he caught some incredible, for our audience who doesn't know who Tom King is, uh, Tom King has been a UFO researcher ever since he uh, had uh, the, um, uh, uh, I, he was an eyewitness to the Phoenix Lights, and I believe he oh, got yeah. video footage of it. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, it's crazy. Mr. Eon, I know you're listening. Why don't you bring your voice of the gods to Spaced Out Radio tonight? Yeah, and, I in. and I apologize if I uh, have missed everybody. Uh, I, I know I've missed a ton of people in the chat room that I normally say hello to. I'm doing my best tonight, guys. Um, but, hey, this is a tough show that we're doing right now. Join us. Hit that link, okay, if you want to come in and uh, come join us. Here we go. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show. Here we go with hour number two of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Very much appreciate burning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Hi to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on Odyssey Radio, Talk Stream Live, and KPNL. All of our archives are free. Join us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. What do you got for us, Clam? Zabaglion. Zabaglion is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the newswire, check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. It's an open forum free for all tonight. After audio issues knocked out our guest at the beginning of the show, Marie Cisneros, we're going to reschedule her because she just has so much information. But we are joined here by a good friend of this show from the podcast, The Social Dig. Rob G is with us. He'll be a guest with us next week as well. We'll, we'll learn his story on how he got involved in ufology. Rob, thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah, no problem, Dave. Glad glad to be here, actually. It's a pleasure I get to be on stage with you while you uh, talk about plethoras. So I, I, I'm, I'm in heaven right now. <laughs> oh, I, I'm so glad you're here. You're one of the good guys out there, man. And I want to make sure our audience gets to know you as well, because that's going to continue. But we're going to continue with our audience uh, questions and calls here. And all the way from Australia, it's Steam Train Mark, who's already let us know we are alive tomorrow in the future. And I always appreciate that, Mark, when you let us know this, because I, I'm always scared. Am I making it till tomorrow? And because of you living in the future in Australia, I always am able to know I got one more day, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, Dave. Yourself? Hello, Rob. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you, too. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. It's a beautiful uh, 74 degrees here in uh, my part of Australia. Bit bit cool wow. for us, but uh, we're in the middle of winter, so what do you expect? You know. Oh, right, seventy four right. degrees. That that is the perfect temperature for me. The perfect yeah. temperature. That's about twenty three degrees Celsius, and uh, or about twenty three to twenty five degrees Celsius, and that is just that's heaven right there for me. Don't need any hotter. Don't need <laughs> any hotter than that. That's for sure. <laughs> You got a story or a question for us tonight, Mark? Um, well, I've got a question, Dave. I'm really curious to know uh, if John Ramirez let anything out at the SOR fa fan party. Because as you know, he's gone quiet and not doing any more interviews until disclosure. That's what he said in some of his interviews. So I'm curious to know if he thinks 
or if he indicated that disclosure is going to happen this year. I have talked to John off the record about this or, or off air about this, and uh, I, I actually tested him. I wanted to see if I could sneak him back on because I still haven't had a chance to interview him. Uh, during the SOR fan party, both Jessica Jones and Marquise Williams from our weekend crew were the ones who got to interview John. And during the the uh, the event back in May, John, I, I was surprised he showed up. I didn't know he was showing up until about two months previous when I was in San Francisco and he was at UFO con as a spectator. And then out of the blue, he states, yeah, I'll see you in Las Vegas, Dave. I've, I've got my ticket already. And I'm like, holy cow. I didn't expect that, but uh, he was pretty mum on things. I mean, he expects a lot of things to happen. He's very woo, by the way, very yeah. woo. He's had his own experiences and I'm not sure, and I like John, so I, I'm going to say this with a very constructive criticism. I'm not sure what his role is yet, whether it's about promoting the woo, promoting people who are questionable, like this lady named Anjali, who he stands behind firm with her. I don't really believe her story, but John seems convinced that she's telling the truth. You know, I mean, and she might be. I don't know, uh, but there are many critics towards her and have de tried to debunk her story and have been very successful at that as well. So I don't know what John's role is in all of this. I found it confusing. I mean, that's, you got to realize when John says he has retired CIA, but yep. you never really retire. If you know what I'm saying, you're yep. always the 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 information is an addiction okay doesn't matter what the subject is i i remember john telling me that there there are a number of people within the cia who are looking into ufos who are experiencers themselves and i believe that because i had somebody i won't say the source but i had somebody tell me that anybody who was involved with the ATIP program, the UAPTF, they're experiencers as well, okay? And in my mind, when I was told that, that also included Lou Elizondo, which is why if you've heard me over the, the last couple of years, I've said, what would it be like if Lou came out as an experiencer? How would that change the ball game? And so John going silent, he has held to his his rule on that. And me personally, I have a feeling that maybe he was asked to step back. I really do. You know, because he did, he did push the line there. He went right up to the line and he was, he was saying that there's some, he actually said in some interviews that I'm going as far as I can before somebody get gives me a call. But he stated openly that he got a text message after one of the interviews he did. Yeah. And I and and those text messages and those phone calls, I totally believe that happened. Okay, I know it happened with our own random guy here. Yep. Okay, and when random guy got the phone call one day, and he was he was uh, reminded, hey, hey, we're listening to you on Spaced Out Radio, and we got to make sure that you remember your non-disclosure agreements and don't slip on those. Otherwise there could be trouble. And I know yeah. that happened because he called me the next day when it happened. So what, what do you make also of Richard Doty when he's talking to Thomas Fessler on dis disclosure? To he, he's talked a fair bit lately and talking a lot. I think Richard Doty is trying to become relevant again. I think he's trying to, reinvent himself because he knows he doesn't have the best of reputations due to the whole Paul Benowitz passing a number of years ago. And a lot of people still blame him for Mr. Benowitz uh, deciding that he had had enough in life and, you know, doing the deed that he did. Well, there's a lot of people who think that was, you know, murder. Yeah. And because uh, they believe Doty tortured him with, information so much that it scared him to death literally yeah and and so 
I don't know what Richard Doty's role is in this. I know people who think that he is a shyster. I know people who think that he is still quite involved in the game and and still pressing hard uh, doing what he's doing for the UFO community or to the UFO community. He has a role in it. What that role is, I don't know personally. You know, I haven't talked to Richard in a long time. Maybe it's something that where we got to bring him back on the air and, and ask him some questions. That might be, he might be open to that. Yeah. Rob, what do you think? Ah, okay, Dodie. It's a mixed bag, man. Um, God, I mean, he, he's admittedly, you know, a deceptive person, um, misinformation agent, disinformation agent. I question, you know, I, I, I see him appear on uh, Disclosure tonight. And, I, you know, I much love Thomas Fessler. But I, I question uh, why he is so focused on uh, making an appearance there. Um, and also, it seem, it seem to me, it seems he has all this information. And uh, I just don't, I don't know if he's plugged in like that right now as far as to the current disclosure movement. And I just wonder what his motives are. You know, I... I it's really I, I don't feel really good when I hear him speaking so matter of factly on a lot of the things that he says. So that's just my opinion on Doty. Um, I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt. I don't know. Well, like well, I said, I, I think he he wants to be relevant again in this subject. He sees the doors opening up and he wants to make sure that he's part of the process. I think I believe it's that simple. Yeah. I well, like you, like you say, Dave, you need to read between the lines, and maybe that's what uh, having Richard Doty on uh, uh, when Thomas has Richard on, because he has stated quite clearly on Disclosure tonight that he's involved with a group of retired intelligence people uh, of various levels, and so he, you know, in terms of never walking away, you, you're still involved, you still have connections, and I'm sure he's. Well, he has stated clearly that he's still under NDAs from the stuff that he did when he worked in AFOSI. Yeah, I mean, but you have to ask yourself, what what uh, what has he done to make you believe the things that he has said? He's 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 come out and he's admitted to basically lying for a living. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you, someone that's an admitted and proven liar, um, how do you go back and trust that person? What, what, what does that person do for you to make them, to make you now trust him? And that's just a well, question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't, I, I don't trust him. I, I okay. listen to what he has to say. And as da Dave states many a times, you read between the lines and even mm -hmm. Lou Elizondo, when he was on Spaced Out Radio and many other interviews, he stated that you need to do your own research. Right. So you, you you listen to what's out there and go looking for yourself. Yeah, um, and he may have some information there, but, uh, you know, it's the track record isn't that great. Uh, reading between the lines, you can only read between the lines that he that come out of his mouth. Um, and, and, you know, there's, n there's n besides him making statements, uh, the people that he, I'm sure he does know people in the back and, you know, retired he may still have some connections, but, uh, where's the proof when it comes to it? I mean, I would love to believe a lot of the stuff that he says, but, uh, we, I think we have to have more than just his words on something like that. I think you probably... I personally take what he says with the grain of salt. I mean, you know, there are a lot of people out there uh, who stand behind uh, the things that he's saying. And, you know, I just Richard Doty's just one of the ones where you have to be like, I don't know. You know what I mean? So that's just my personal opinion on that, though. I'm sorry. No, yeah. No, I mean, you don't have to apologize for anything. You, you're right. Take it with a grain of salt. Put it in your in your coat pocket or whatever, and just think about it and sit on it. Dave, uh, are you going to get Ross Coulthard back on anytime soon? Because he's been doing a lot of work. I'm trying. 
I I have had messages out to him. He's he's tied up right now, both yeah. him and Bryce Mabel, uh, with other commitments that they have. But I am trying right now to uh, get Ross Coldhart back on here. Yeah, excellent for sure, right. for sure. All right, Steam Train Mark, thank you for calling on in. We very much appreciate your love and support of Spaced Out Radio all the way down in Australia. Enjoy your very beautiful weather. And uh, by the way, what kind of birds were those squawking in the background? Uh, around here, we've got crows. Uh, we, yeah, that's the crows at the moment that are, that you can probably hear. We've got a number of other birds that fly around here. Um, bin, bin chickens or, um, you know, the ones with the long bendy beaks, whatever they are. Oh, the ibises. Yeah, we've got a bunch of them around. They make a heap of noise and... Uh, but that's that's my steamroller in the background that I'm working on. So um, th- this is the man cave up here. So when I'm, that's what I do when I'm listening to Dave. I'm working up here, not always, but nice. most times. All right, guys, thank you very much for having me on. I really that's appreciate fun. it, Dave. Thanks, Mark. Take care. Nice Good to meet you. Yourselves. See you later. See you later, steam train, Mark. All the way from <laughs> Australia. We love them around here. You know. I, I, you know, when I started this show eight and a half years ago, man, there is no way I expected having a, you know, a number of listeners in Canada and the United States. I didn't expect this this show to go worldwide on the internet the way it has, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it blows me away. Like every time I get so excited when I, you know, like the other night we had uh, a lady from Nicaragua who now lives in Panama listening in. We got people in Brazil and Tasmania and Thailand and and Japan and Vietnam and and you know all India and and all over you know different countries in in Africa and in different countries in Europe and it's amazing to me, man, absolutely yeah. amazing. And they all love you too. I mean, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy the reach that you have and the adoration that your uh, fans have for you i'm in the chat all the time so i see uh you know the gratitude that they have for you dave so you're doing the right things man well you know what i appreciate that it's just it's humbling man it's very humbling to see all these people tuning in from around the world it really is you know we got a couple questions coming from our chat room here Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna ask those questions this First one, I believe, is from Derek. Actually, a couple from Derek here. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Senate committee taking over disclosure? Uh, I'll go with your thoughts first on this, Rob, and then I'll give my two cents. Well, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. On my show, one of the main things that we say is that the uh, disclosure will never come from the government. It'll come from the people first. So it's another grain of salt thing for me. I'm happy that uh, we have like Schumer recently uh, stated that he's going to try to put an amendment on the next NDAA uh, to declassify UFO uh, documents. So, I mean, I'm happy that there is movement there. Um, You know, I'm happy that they are all taking this a lot more seriously a lot more, it seems like a lot more of the Congress people are picking up on the fact that this is an important issue to humanity and they're doing their job. And I think that's, that's, that resonates with me really well. And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, there, these black projects with these contractors, for me, I feel like by the time we get the wheel rolling, and they get the going to knock on these doors. Is that material still going to be there? You know, so is this all for not? You know what I mean? I I don't know, Dave. What do you think about that? Well, one of the uh, one of the things that I think we need to point out, and uh, Thomas Fessler from Disclosure Tonight did a good job on this on uh, Twitter and pointing it out. There's a 25 year window on this. 25 year window on whether or not disclosure happens at the hands of the United States president. And we have to, we have to remember 25 years, geez, I'll be 75 years old by the time that happens. And, you know, I'll have to give way to all you youngins there to, 
to make sure that, you know, you're carrying the torch uh, for, for the rest of us. But, you know, I think that, look, we are in a major confirmation movement right now. You know, yeah. we, we do. We have a major confirmation movement. And with that confirmation movement, we're going to see this posturing going around towards the disclosure movement. And it's going to continue. And it's going to, you know, seem like all of a sudden we're rushing to get close to the big D. But then all of a sudden everything's going to be held back. We have to also remember that the United States, whether you want to believe it or not, is a huge player in the military industrial complex. And if they start pissing off these private companies who are defense contractors, who are making the weapons, who are making the wheels, who are making the cockpits or the wings or the or the nuts and bolts for, for tanks and, and other armament, how is these state senators going to feel when all of a sudden they start putting pressure on Raytheon or Lockheed Martin saying, give us your UFO stuff. When all of a sudden, maybe Lockheed Martin says, you know, uh, Senator from Kentucky, we'd really, really hate for your, your uh, state to lose that, that uh, contract building tanks. Yeah. We'd really hate that to happen. We'd really hate to see, uh, you know, the wings for for F-35s pulled out of your state and moved over to Ohio or California or Georgia or wherever it may be. We'd hate to see those 750 people who rely on this job to all of a sudden be unemployed. We'd mm. really hate to see that. And Great don't point. think it hasn't and don't think it hasn't happened before. We're just not seeing these groups get uh, their their hackles up yet. Right? Because everybody's excited about this becoming a Senate committee taking over disclosure. But there's real ramifications here, Rob, that are yeah. not being talked about. Your thoughts? Yeah. You make great points there. I mean, uh, that's definitely a card that you can probably guarantee is going to be played at some point during this process, you know, and that's where it gets tricky. It's the politics of it all. And, you know, that that's why I say, I mean, when you look at it, uh, like we had Nancy here, um, you have the kids at the aerial school, you have uh, Virginia, Brazil, you have all these different cases where, us as humanity, we we have experienced all these different things. We've seen the craft. We've seen the beings. So, you know, I always feel like and I still feel like it's a waste of time even thinking about, you know, what the government is going to do. Because like you said, it's a 25 year situation where we could be sitting here forever because they're all they're going to do is kick the can down the road like they've always done. You know, we're waiting six months for a report. Then we're doing this thing every year. So all of a sudden we're having these breaks between uh, points where we feel like they're going to give us new information or more information or this is going to be the time that they give it all or let it spill out. Uh, but they're the masters at kicking the can down the road. They've done it for 75 years. What makes you think 25 more years is easy for them. So, um, you know. I really hate to, you know, it's almost for people who are waiting for the government to disclose, don't hold your breath. You know what I mean? I think we need to do like Tim, Tim Senor is doing ground roots, grassroots efforts, uh, collecting data ourselves, putting the puzzle together ourselves. Then we come together as a one huge group as humanity. And if you want the answers, then, then we go knocking on the doors. We go march on washington hey my friend you hold on right there we are halfway through tonight's show i'm gonna take rob g the distance tonight and mr eon voice of the gods is gonna join us as well spaced out radio continues right after this
Oh God, I'm so excited. Ian is here. Uh, so uh, listen to this voice, man. This is the greatest voice in ufology. <laughs> Dave, you're you too doing? kind. Oh, there it <laughs> is. I, I just melt when I hear you talk, my man. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I got a I got a voice crush on you. I do. I have a voice crush. <laughs> likewise, likewise, Dave. Likewise. Is my mic picking me up okay, that? Yeah. Oh, you sound gorgeous. Sound really good. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How are you keeping? Oh, you all right? Uh, I am great. I felt horrible tonight because I was really looking forward to Marie Cisneros, and and her audio was just so choppy, and and she she was hearing me on a delay, and and everything. It just it was uh, it was tough. So I I unfortunately had to cut her off after the first half hour. I, I, f- I felt horrible because I never do that. I, I will usually fight through it, but it was just way too hard. I think way it's because when, when you click the StreamYard link, it opens another tab, but it keeps playing the YouTube stream at the same time. So you get the audio feeding back on no, itself. But it, with it, the delay. It different. It was something like we, she, even before the show for like 15 minutes, we were trying to figure out her audio and video and, I just said, keep your video off. Let's try the audio and let's just try and make something work here. And unfortunately, mm. it didn't. Did you like them photos I did for you then? Oh, yeah. I'm using them as my, uh, as my, uh, 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 profile to, uh, you know, on Twitter when I promote the show. It's quite amazing stuff. So, um, My wife quite sadly lost her father at an early age and I managed this evening to get some the latest photos that she had of him and um, I've used it like a time machine and I've brought him back as a 70 year old man. It's quite something to be honest. I've done you, I've done Marquise, I've done Steve, I've done uh, my girlfriend's mother. I've made her look 20 again. She loves me. That's awesome. Um, one second here. I'm just responding to a, <laughs> no, I'm responding to an email from uh, Marie tonight because she feels bad. Uh, How do you think this whole um, whistleblowing thing is panning out? Uh, we'll talk about that in about two and a half minutes. How about that? Yeah, your name is Ian? Yes. Yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, my name is Rob. Uh, my name is, you can oh. call me Rob. You have a, you do have a great voice. Do you, have you done any radio or anything like that? Or I'm probably too shy to do that. I'd fall over and falter in the middle of a show or something. Wouldn't know what to say. Get totally stage struck. Uh, you definitely have a voice <laughs> for some, some things for sure. For sure. Stories, uh, I don't know, the midnight hour or something like that. You definitely had that voice. You yeah. Think. Yeah. I, I wish I could talk like that. I'd love you to do, you know, the intro, <laughs> the War of the Worlds intro. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you definitely s- have money in that voice. Yeah. Like to do it. I do the show intros for Steve uh, for Truth Seekers. Um, I do his charity bumpers and stuff. So. Ah, okay. Okay. But for free but for free i'm not a glory hunter or anything so anything i've done for dave i just do it and fire and forget it's the yeah, you're, thing, isn't it? you're amazing you are yeah absolutely. yeah 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 mr eon voice of the gods oh you're too kind oh i I, I, <laughs> I spent my teenage years with this little uh national panasonic <laughs> fm radio that i used to take to bed and have under the pillow and i used to listen to chat radio we used to have a local station where people would call in and and they'd call in with ufo stories and all kinds of stuff and we got a lot of a lot of that sort of thing in the north of uh, of england so it was just beautiful and uh, obviously then is it art bell that does um coast to coast back yeah. in the day yeah back in the day and just listening to that as well. We were lucky to get that. So, 
Uh, thank you, LM. Very much appreciate that, man. Uh, you know what? Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it does. But thank you for that lovely super chat. Very much appreciate. Uh, I feel horrible for our guest because I really wanted uh, her to be on. And and uh, I'm a fan of hers. But um, you know what? The show must go on. Like We're not like a, a regular podcast that can just shut things down. We got to keep going. So here we go, everyone. Next half hour. We pass the halfway point of Space Down Radio tonight. Good to have you with us. My name is Dave Scott. Always appreciate earning your listening ears. I want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Space Down Radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the newswire, check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. We are continuing with audience questions tonight. It's an open floor here on the Mighty SOR right till the end. We are joined by special guest Rob G from the Social Dig podcast and a man who I like to call the voice of the gods all the way from the lovely UK Mr. Ian, and when you hear Ian speak, you will know why. And thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. We got a great question here from Derek, who is asking, what are your thoughts on Congressman Tim Burchett saying he has seen classified footage and he doesn't think we are ready for this to come out? I have been, and that's a great question, Derek. Thank you for that. And if anybody in our chat room wants to ask questions, Put your questions in capital letters, or if you're on Twitter, do it there. Or if you want to join the show, I do have a link posted on our YouTube channel for this show right now if you want to join in and call in. But I have always stated point blank, I do not feel that the majority of the public is ready for this. The people who say that they are ready, they are people who have either A, had an experience B, they've been following this story for a long time. Or C, they are people who are just wacko, crazy, and ready for anything because they love a good rush. But we have to realize something here. A lot of these people who say we are ready, they're not talking about the world. They are talking about their own crew, their own people they hang out with. Maybe the United States of America is ready, okay? They're not looking at this from a world standpoint, okay? What was that music there? Is that Rob G getting us all romantic there? (laughs) That was. That totally was. uh, Or was that you, Ian? No, that was me. Oh, okay. I, that it was good though. I mean, I thought you was like it was like build up music. <laughs> no, I was excited there. It kind of got me. Yeah, I was trying to hit my mute button. It was my bad. It worked. It worked so That's well. That's okay. <laughs> the point, the point that I'm get that I'm getting at, though, gentlemen, is this: where I don't think people are recognizing that the world is not ready for disclosure, whether we want to admit it or not. There are, there are 8 billion people on this planet. More than half of them are still very religious. And religious people, for the majority of the religions out there, anything that comes from the stars is demonic. And we got to fight it. Okay? There is that, that unfortunate part. We have people who like to party like it's fourteen ninety nine out there. To use the old uh, Prince song. Tonight we're going to party... Like it's fourteen ninety nine, okay. We have people who still live in the jungles of Brazil or Thailand or Laos or or Africa or islands off of India that do not have an understanding of what civilization has grown to, let alone extraterrestrials. 
We have people out there who suffer from depression and anxiety who will not be ready for this. We have no idea what it's going to do to the economy. We have no idea what it's going to do to the petrol dollar. We have no idea what it's going to do to militaries around the world. Russia, China, to be most specific. Okay, and how they're going to react to it. What does a guy like Kim Jong-un do in North Korea? The minute a UFO lands in, you know, whatever part of his country, does he all of a sudden hit the nuke button? Because can't trust him because he's going to think that's American. What do you okay. do then? Do you, do you not ahead. think? Do you not think that human compliance plays a part in this? I mean, what if I was to say, "Hey, everyone, stay in your homes and don't go out for two years"? You think they'd do that? So well, I think been... that the test of compliance there is that as long as a certain percentage of society say that something is acceptable, then the rest of society falls in line with that so like any new thing that comes out it's often slated in the media and de demonized almost until it becomes accepted and then it's generally oh yeah do you remember 30 years ago when we said that would be bad and now it's a part of everyday life yeah. things like that you know so well, we will it, accept it it's, it's easy and that reminds me of the conversation i had with lou elizondo and i had asked him after you know covid started calming down I asked him point blank. I said, was the way people reacted towards COVID looked at by people in the UFO community about how we were treating one another during the pandemic? And his answer was yes, absolutely. Because think about it. There are very few topics on this planet that are going to affect every single person. A nuclear holocaust would okay uh covid whether you buy into it or not that's your choice okay that affected the majority of the populations okay not all but jesus christ himself so let's say that he comes down from the heavens and says hey ladies and gentlemen i am back that's going to affect everybody no one would believe him Nobody would believe him, but you You'd never You'd have know. to say, I'm not back, and I'm not Jesus. <laughs> Denial <laughs> is proof. But, but extraterrestrial contact would 100% affect every single person on this planet. It would. And the way we treated people throughout the pandemic, where people were buying 10 jugs of milk at a time, or or the toilet paper fiasco, or the or the beef fiasco, or the uh, Metamucil fiasco, or whatever it may be, all right? We treated people like crap. We did. We treated our neighbors like crap because we had to make sure we had enough or more than enough rather than sharing and being a part of a, uh, uh, of a solution. We went individual, right? and that's the issue. And that's the one thing that I know Elizondo said they were watching. Yeah, uh, I agree, Dave. I mean, this, this, you know, the pandemic showed you how fragile society really is, this bubble that we live in. It doesn't that's take crazy. much. Anything, uh, it takes very little for this to all fall apart. Um, and I think people, uh, we live in that protective bubble and we think that it's that, that, uh, thing that nothing would affect us, that we can just go on. And I hear a lot of people say, oh no, disclosure comes through, uh, life will go on as usual. And I just don't think that that's the case. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I do the show that I do, because, it, it, you know, we're looking past that point. What happens to humanity? What, what? You know, there's decisions that have to be made there. It's the chance to redirect where we go as humanity to create a new path. And we're going to need to sit down together and figure out what we do to take that next step, because society will be affected for sure. I mean, there's no doubt about it. 
Now, will it all fall to hell? I don't know about that, but there's going to be a lot of people looking for direction and wondering how we move forward. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. The question is, what is that direction? What, you know, what is that great reset of aliens that is out there? Because we keep hearing about the great reset. Holy cow. I don't know, but it, maybe it does include Ock and Spock from, from Zeta Reticuli. I don't know, but it, it, I find it very interesting to see where it's going to play out and how it's going to play out regarding, you know, where we're going with this. See, you and know, I think, uh, well, I think the big mistake is, is, is waiting until we get there to figure it out. We're supposed to be figuring this out now. You know what I mean? And those are the discussions that we should be having, not more so uh, is is this spaceship real? Uh, show me a picture. We need to be getting together and figuring out today, you know, how we're going to handle that once this comes, whether it's 10 years down the road or whether it's tomorrow, we have to already have. And that's kind of the show we did today was about alien contact. What's the game plan? And I don't think we have one and we need to really sit down and figure all that stuff out now we can't wait until then because we'll be lost we'll we'll be trying to figure it out on the fly and i think that's a big mistake we can establish that the government has already said that aliens exist that this phenomena is real and that they do not know what it is that's that's a fact we've had that so far yeah that's disclosure now we are begging them and saying what are they what are they what are they what are they and they've already said they don't know what they are but we only got that what what was it like a four or five page document and the uh congress members got to go in and and they had to sign a uh, an nda and and have all mobile phones taken off them and everything they went into this room where they were allowed to read this 96 page document i believe it was which contained a lot more information, but even even that had redactions in it. Well, I think so, also, Ian. I think also to add to your point, we don't know. We only know what they're saying publicly. We don't know behind the scenes, and this is why you know whether you believe David Grush or not, we have to take his points that he made very seriously regarding the fact that he is saying that we have crash retrievals, we have the pilots, and we have full intact crash retrie- or uh, craft. Were those craft given to us? Were they just ones that, you know, like along the freeway, you see a, you see a, uh, uh, a 2021 Camaro pulled over on the side of the road because it dropped its transmission? Is that, is that or blew a head gasket? Is that why these craft are intact or were they gifts? Were they gifts for study because contact has been going on? Then when we talk about the pilots, do we have the bodies or do we have bodies and creatures that are alive? Did you see the, um, the EBO Reddit that was detailing the physiology of, of aliens that was i think repost i think it was an old document they reposted it recently i did um i have adhd so it would have been really hard for me to read the whole document without something distracting me so i did a text to speech and converted it put it up on my channel um as a full reading of it just so that i can walk around and listen to it in headphones and i thought i'd put it up so other people could as well there's plenty of other adhd people out there as well <laughs> so um uh, that was detailing that the physiology of these creatures was the word they used was ephemeral or fleeting that they were created to fulfill a task and not exactly designed to last for very long that would that would imply some kind of an avatar wouldn't it you know that you're like a biological android that you project into and drive from somewhere else yeah yeah i've heard that theory as well 
Uh, it's hard to say, though. I mean, that's where we talk to the experiencers. I mean, uh, they have more of the information, I feel, than anyone else uh, as far as what these th things might be. And, uh, you know, oh, Rob, I'm an experiencer. I'm an experiencer. Oh, okay. I've, seen, okay. I've seen one of these things. So okay. I've seen one of these things. I haven't seen it materialize in front of me, but it was in my room and then it wasn't in my room. Wherever it did the materialization was up behind a curtain where I couldn't see it. When was it, it the it graves told, or? I don't know what it was. Okay. I was in a locked uh, hotel apartment with my, with my wife. And this thing pulled the covers off the bed, screamed at us, and then ran across the floor and went up behind the curtain. And it couldn't make a purchase on the tiled floor. It was skating across the floor, so it didn't have feet. It had more animal feet. I wouldn't say like claws, but more like um, like um, like a, a running dog would have very up on its toes, you know. Wow, that's wow. You hear that with the aerial school, they say that, that the, uh, those beings were floating, uh, you know, as well. So, uh, I don't know. I haven't uh, had an actual experience in that way. So, you know, I, I don't really have much to, to offer. It's, as the, far it's, as the, goes. it's the smell that it leaves in the room. Was it's it the, the sulfur smell. that they say? It's, 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 it smells like manure that's been electrified. And obviously manure is a sulfur producing thing but it's a it's a richer smell than that it's like i and i it's like something's blown something's crapped in your fuse box that would be the only way to describe mm, okay. smell. yeah very yeah, descriptive very, I, I understand that yeah and it's very distinct smell i've had a couple of experiences and every experience i've had has had that smell associated with it Maybe I'm pre I'm happy that I, my nose doesn't work properly, <laughs> but I, I haven't smelled a thing when I've had that experience. It's like even when we've been around the Sasquatch in our area, I haven't smelled a thing, you know, and pe that's the first thing people always ask. What does it smell like? Did you get that odor? No, I never got that odor. The, the physiology of these creatures, as was suggested in that Reddit um, post, was that they don't have the same... Uh, bodily system for processing waste and they excrete waste through their skin pores which is why and they also don't eat solid foods they eat um a, a liquid nutrient blend so the new liquid nutrient blend means they any urea that builds up in their body is expelled through the skin rather than as solid or liquid waste let me let me ask you something ian because you know you are somebody who you know, we've been talking for well over a couple of years now, and you're, you're somebody who I, I really trust in, in an opinion, and probably because of your sexy voice, to be blunt. Okay. But I have a real, I don't read Reddit. I don't, I have a real tough time trusting I, the information on, no, on I Reddit. I don't. I just get pinged the feeds every so often. I've yeah, got about. Too. I'll, I'll, I have about one. I don't really do a lot on Facebook and, oh, sorry, on YouTube and Twitter and stuff. I'm more grounded in Facebook. I've got sort of one and a half thousand friends and followers on Facebook that will ping me messages because they know I'm a big weirdo. So they'll send me stories like that. <laughs> but the question that I'm asking is how do you trust a place like Reddit where anybody can make up anything? And write about it. Oh. I mean, if you're a good sci-fi writer and you put it out on Reddit, you're, I mean, you're pretty much uh, promoting the idea that, you know, you can, you can fool a lot of people. Well, the terrifying thing, this new chat GPT, if you use, um, oh, is it Edge? Microsoft Edge browser. In the top, very top right corner, you can click that little swirly icon and it will bring up the chat. And that is actually chat GPT 4. And you can ask ChatGPT4 to simulate an ex-Skunk Works uh, Raytheon employee that uh, wasn't paid fully for his contract. His name's Murray, 
Uh, he's got a wife called Sandra and two daughters called Jennifer and Caitlin. Um, he's always very keen to tell you about stories uh, from his employment with Raytheon and Skunk Works. Um, just ask him. Thank you. And, and the chat GPT at that point will simulate this character, Murray. He'll talk about his wife, his kids, holidays they've been on. He'll tell you about crash, UFO crash recoveries that they've been on. And the whole thing is legit. It's based in science. He backs it all up. It's amazing. So, and I would say from this point on with AI, the state it's at, believe nothing that you see believe only that which you touch with your hands Seriously. it's about to get scarier it's about yep. to get scarier. oh yeah oh dave you know it is you've seen what i can do yeah i mean for fun. steve yes steve did an episode yesterday on sasquatch and he asked me for a picture of um a sasquatch so i gave a picture of i did a picture in ai of him a photo reel you couldn't tell it apart from a fo it's a photograph of him kneeling in a forest with his hand out and a Sasquatch reaching out and touching his hand. Now, where'd you get an image like that from? Yeah. 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 It's going to, uh, I think AI is going to ruin all concepts of what reality really is on a medium scale. I think it's going to kill the newsroom eventually because you're not going to be able to tell what's true and what's not anymore. I mean, I you, think people you need know to learn reminds, how to use it. You know what it reminds me of? Remember the movie The Running Man, oh, yeah. where Arnold Schwarzenegger was the pilot right at the beginning, and and uh, he got knocked out because he didn't want to fire the machine guns from his helicopter, and they it, totally yeah. AI'd it, saying yeah. that he was the the killer who who wanted to, you know, and he he was knocking out the gunmen, and he continued to fire on innocent people who just wanted to eat, you know, that's what we're dealing with in the, in this re new reality with AI is we're not going to be able to tell what is real and what is not. And if there's, let's, let's say there's another conflict. doesn't matter where, let's say it's in Canada here. If there's a major conflict, how, how do you know if that film is actually real or not? You're not going okay. to know. So about, Oh, I'd say about eight hours ago, actually. Eight hours ago, there was an NVIDIA announcement that their frame rate generation in ray traced graphics has increased by 10,000%. Mm -hmm. 10,000%. ,000%. So they worked out that instead of having to calculate the paths of light bouncing off things, that light actually behaves as a magnetic wave. And computers are really good at doing intersecting wave fields that can produce beautiful what they call moi patterns where you get circles passing through circles and it looks very 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 <laughs> like optical illusion you know well they've worked out that light travels like that and they've upped the rate by ten thousand percent of generation in ray tracing we'll very soon see this passing across to um what they say is text to video and you'll be able to create real-time video in AI. I mean, over the last six months, we've seen it going from being able to produce an image every five or six seconds to more recently, in the past couple of weeks, we can now generate an image in about 0 0.8 of a second. And with this new advancement, we'll be able to produce 100 frames a second without it even thinking about it, with any text input you give it. That, now, that is imagination, that's dreaming. And it'll do that at beautiful, crisp quality. If you get the higher the quality, the lower the frame rate. So, hey, let's say we can get super high res and only get 20 frames a second. That's still legitimate video. Well, Jeez. you know what? As we, as we start to wrap up this half hour of the show, I do have to say this. I, I still, and maybe I'm way too old school thinking here, okay, but I still don't understand what the benefit of chat GPT or AI video and everything is about. I don't see where it's going to be a benefit. You know, I do I want to see AI help out people who have real concerns, like health concerns? Absolutely. Very much. But, for, but the way it's going to be playing with life, I don't know if that's a good thing for humanity. 
That's just me. One more hour to go on Spaced Out Radio. Rob G. from The Social Dig is with us. So is the voice of the gods, Mr. Eon. We'll be back right after this on Spaced Out Radio. I'm just going to, you guys chat away. I'm going to be uh, right back. Ian, if no, you I've got to say- Dave, Dave, Dave it's, it's seven o'clock. My wife's up in 10 minutes. I've got to get a bowl of porridge. I've got to get a pan of porridge going on the stove and everything. <laughs> I'm doing the morning breakfast round. You go. You go, buddy. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. Nice to no, meet amazing. you, Ian. And you, Rob. And you, Rob. For Mr. sure. G. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Rob G's sticking around. I knew that. Yeah, I'm here with you, Dave. That will go then. I'll All go right, and keep yeah. working. Um, if you still want to do those scripts, mate, everything I've sent you so far has just been total yeah. rough. So we haven't done anything properly. Apart yeah, from the last you. one, that was artificial intelligence. The last yeah. one I sent you. Did you like that? I'm going to be listening to them this weekend because I'm going Please to be do. redoing my entire studio. I, so. sent a, I sent a copy to Tim and to Marquise as well. And nice. they were... He was like, how have you done that? How? <laughs> <laughs> you scare me, buddy. All right, take care. Love you, man. Rob, take care. See Much love, yeah, buddy. See, see you, everyone. Thank you. Rob, I'm gonna, do you want to stick around or do you want to go in the green room for a minute? Yeah, you can stick me in the back. I need to do something anywhere real quick. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>
All right, I am back. Sweet Robbie G, there he is. Yes, sir. Show us that beautiful goatee, man. Yeah, it's gone now. Have a block. Yeah, there we go. Not quite as far. I can't grow all this like you, Dave. I tried. I can't do it. Yeah, but I'm jealous of that chin hair, man. <laughs> jealous of that chin hair, buddy. Hey, oh, thank man. You. Thank you again for joining us. Not at all. Not No problem. It's an honor. I'd be in the chat if I wasn't here, so you already know. Well, it's good to have you here, man. Definitely appreciate it. Hey, uh, to our audience, remember that uh, that link is still pinned if you want to join us. And if uh, you ha don't want to join us, but you want to ask some questions, put them in capital letters in the chat room. I want to say a big thank you tonight to Debs and uh, Obi Flat, Surf Chair, a great veteran of the United States Air Force. Gizmo, who's coming up here fishing in the smoke. And LM for those great super chats. Very much appreciate the love, everyone. And uh, we're going to continue on here. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe, ring that bell, give us a thumbs up. We're 10 away from 100. We like to hit 100 each and every night. Here we go. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Here we go with the final hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Very much appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on Odyssey Radio, TalkStream Live, and KPNL. All of our archives are free. Join us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Zabaglion. Zabaglion is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the news wire, check out our swag. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. We continue on with your thoughts tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We are joined by Mr. Rob G. And before we bring Rob back on, we got Steve Stockton from Among the Missing with another spooky story for us. Hello, friends. Welcome to Among the Missing YouTube channel on Spaced Out Radio. I'm Steve Stockton. I'm about to take you on an unbelievable journey of people just like you. Their stories and encounters will haunt us on Among the Missing. The infamous Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow, along with their gang, killed nine police officers and four civilians in an incredible crime spree over several years in the 1930s. Wanted for murder, robbery, and kidnapping. They were ambushed by police in a 1932 Ford Model 18 V8 and killed in a hail of 130 bullets. They were never offered a chance to surrender. It's believed that on that day, May 23, 1934, as Bonnie and Clyde's blood soaked into the seats of the Ford, their souls also attached themselves to the car. Their bodies had been left in the vehicle. Bonnie slumped over Clyde as it was towed away from a lonely road in Bienville Parish, Louisiana, a seriously macabre scene. The V8 ended up on display at Whiskey Pete's Casino in Nevada, and its aura is tangible. I've visited it myself, and there is a strange feeling around the car. I spoke to several of the cocktail waitresses who described everything from low moans to crying sounds coming from inside the car. Others have described a ghostly presence inside. Numerous people have vowed to never go anywhere near the car again after experiencing such a presence. There are photographs circulating showing mysterious figures, mists, and light in the Ford, and paranormal investigators fascinated with the energy they pick up around the car to this day. And paranormal investigators are fascinated by the energy they pick up around the car to this day. Number seven, the Phantom Number Seven London Bus. There were so many reports and sightings to the Phantom Number no. 7 bus in such a relatively small area 
that locals are convinced it does indeed exist. A number of terrible deaths are put down to the red double-decker bus suddenly appearing in the oncoming line and then just as mysteriously disappearing after causing mayhem. The first report was in 1934. A bystander described how a driver on an empty road swerved to avoid a bus that had materialized out of thin air and then disappeared just as quickly. The startled man plowed straight into a pillar in Cambridge Gardens, West London. He managed to give his account, which did match the witness, to police before he died of catastrophic injuries. Reports of the Phantom Bus, also called the Night Night, appearing in the oncoming lane as startling drivers continued for many years after this first incident. Both pedestrians and drivers alike kept a watchful eye out on the roads in West London. One Londoner, one of the few who survived an encounter, was so traumatized by his vision of the Phantom Bus that when he tried to detail the accident, police were convinced that he had been driven mad by some kind of intoxication. This, however, was not the case. He told police, quote, I turned around the corner and saw the bus moving. The headlights were shining, both floors were lit, and there was no one inside, neither driver nor passengers. I, of course, turned the steering wheel, drove out onto the sidewalk, and slightly hooked on the fence, and the bus immediately disappeared, end quote. Similarities in accounts of the Phantom Number no. 7 bus over 60 years are eye-opening. Both witnesses and the few accident survivors all described how it would suddenly materialize from seemingly out of nowhere in the oncoming lane around 1.15 a.m., a time when no buses had been scheduled with no driver or passengers. Drivers would be frightened witless into crashing and die on impact or very shortly thereafter. The blood-red phantom of a bus would then disappear as quickly as it had appeared. And we want to say thank you to Steve Stockton from Among the Missing for joining us every Monday through Friday night on Spaced Out Radio with another creepy story. You can listen to more. All you got to do is go to his YouTube channel, hit subscribe, youtube.com forward slash Among the Missing. And that's the way we do it here. We're going to continue on here. Normally at this time of the night, we have Tim Senor from the UFO Report join us. But Tim is also having issues with his internet tonight and cannot get on so we got from the social dig podcast and youtube channel mr rob g how you doing rob hey doing good doing good tim if you're out there i'll, I'll take over for you today tim it's okay you know i want to get back to a question that was asked earlier in the last half hour from derek regarding congressman tim burchett because it really looks like we are getting close to more hearings. We're hearing around July 26th that there will be more hearings going on. And that this is called, you know, from Chuck Schumer, we're hearing the Disclosure Act about to come out regarding uh, UFOs and what the United States government really knows about this. But we'll get to that in a second. Tim Burchett, you know, is a congressman from Tennessee. He is, you know, a lot of people call him extreme right. I'm not, I don't care about his politics. I really don't. And being Canadian, it doesn't affect me at all either way. But where I am excited about it is, you know, his vocal attitude towards the UFO subject. He seems to be the only politician really fighting for true disclosure, Rob. You know, he wants the public to know if we have the crash retrievals. He wants the public to know about whether or not we have ET contact or if aliens are here right now. He wants to know what happened at Roswell, Phoenix, and many other places in between, you know, to tell us truly what is going on with this subject. He is a believer. He is someone who is is very much a proponent of learning about this subject. I mean, are we giving Tim Burchett too much credit for this rob or are we uh you know is he someone you think we have to be careful because ufology over the last little bit rob i don't know if you've noticed online but i have but i i noticed this about four months ago where i actually read a twitter post that says that if if you're on the left or if you're left leaning in any way you should not be involved in any sort of ufology or pardon me whatever whatever i always get the left and right confused if you're a republican is that left or right 
I uh, want. Well, I believe that's right. I, I'm not a politics okay. guy either. Yeah. Okay. So I I don't really understand the whole left and right. I, I think it is right. So, uh, but if you're extreme right, you have no reason being in in ufology. You know, for all the the simple reasons we see online. You know, from from uh, you know <clears throat> the political side of thing. I'm not going to get into the all the all the uh, adjectives that go along with that. That's unnecessary. But uh, I really do believe, though, that it, this is a bipartisan topic. Yeah. It has been since the beginning, but it seems that UFO Twitter especially wants to divide it into a political realm that if you're on the right, you can't be talking about UFOs and aliens because this is a left subject. And I think Tim Burchett is fighting it down the middle. I agree. I agree. I, I always praise Tim Burchett uh, for being a, a vocal voice out in Congress uh, pushing for humanity. And that's the thing. I mean, uh, you know, just at the social dig, we don't, you know, we leave politics at the door. Uh, we, I don't care, you know, what your religion is, what's your walk of life. Uh, we all come in as human beings. And that that's how I see all of my viewers as, as humans. And I applaud uh, even, you know, if we got into politics, there probably might be some things that I wouldn't agree with. But um, you know, when you are siding on the side of humanity, then I'm I'm all for you and I'm going to back you. So Tim Burchett is one of the ones and you can tell that he really doesn't. Uh, he understands that taking the stance that he's taking could affect his political future. But see, we need those ones like him that don't care about that. They're putting humanity first. That's how I feel. Um, you know, some people may say, oh, he's doing it. Uh, for to advance himself politically in the future, but I just don't see that because he's calling out the government. He's calling. He's he's uh, calling out Washington, first of all, and um, you know, I just feel like he's one of the true humanitarians who are pushing to get us the answers that we want. So. Yeah, that's that's my view on Tim Burchett. I applaud him, and even you know, uh, if some people don't like Tucker Car Tucker Carlson. I I gave Tucker Carlson his props for standing up for humanity and letting this be this issue uh, supersede any of his political views. So that that that's how you can tell. You know, you have the government on this side, you have the rest of humanity here, and we need those people that are in the government to step over here with us and stand up for us. And Tim Burchett is definitely one that's doing that. It's going to be interesting to see because now that Chuck Schumer has jumped on board and there's the uh, Senator out or Congressperson out of Missouri, who's really uh, uh, jumping on board with the UFO front. I mean, it, this is a subject that is gaining momentum. Okay. And it leads to another set of hearings which we're hearing at the end of the month. And what I'm, you know, what I'm seeing here is we're hearing that, you know, there's this new report that they're going to bring in about uh, disclosure 2023. What kind of disclosure are we going to have? That's the big one for me. What is the, what is the disclosure we're going to have? Is it that we're going to see more cover-ups? Because I want more David Grushes to come out publicly. I want them to come out and be a part of this. I want them to to open up and and really talk about the experiences that they have had, not only as researchers, but the maybe the roadblocks that they have hit. We have a right to know. The American public more so has a right to know regarding this subject, Rob. Yeah, and Tim Burchett uh, said, and this is kind of pretty much how it's probably going to have to go, Tim Burchett did state, uh, I'd say maybe a few weeks ago, that it's going to take someone to break their NDA in order to get this thing pushed across the line. And I agree with that. You know, an NDA, when, when you're sitting down thinking about it, you know, the government operates as a machine uh, with no feelings. And, um, you know, when you get those, you have to get the ones that, are thinking about 
humans and and think and and I put it the way I put it is is like if you're not gonna do it for humanity, do it for your future generations, do it for your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. They're the ones who are gonna adopt this world uh, once you're done and gone. So uh, it's gonna take some of those people in the government who have knowledge of what's going on, who have touched the craft, who are working with these craft to have a come to Jesus moment and really think about, put themselves aside and think about the future of everyone else. And, and that may take breaking an NDA. I'm kind of for that because I feel like if, if someone took that risk and broke an NDA and brought the disclosure from the government that everyone's looking for, I feel like the population would stand behind that person and, and, and fight for that person to, uh, you know, not be prosecuted or any of the things that come from breaking an NDA. So I think it's going to have to be messy like that uh, in order for this thing to really get pushed across the line, because as long as they dangle this NDA uh, over your head, it's going to be a lot of people that might may not be willing to take that chance. But all we need is one. All we need is one. What do we need to see? In your opinion, what, what what do you want to see? Well, I mean, from the government, we need to see, and, and, and tr- like like you, you've had your own disclosure. I've had my own personal disclosure as well. So if I'm depending on the government to give the word, then we need to, we need to, to see a craft. Ask a skeptic. A skeptic will tell you they need to see the craft. They need to see the bean. And I guess those would be the things that we would ask for them to show us. We know they have the bodies. We know they have the craft. We we need someone to go physically to where these things are being stored, knock on the door, just like a search warrant, serve a warrant, go in there and bring out the material, bring out the craft. But the thing I'm, um, if I'm depending on the government, the thing that I'm worried about is by the time they get to that point where they where they go knock on the door, they're going to already have hidden the things that we're looking for. So, I mean, that I think is going to be the thing that we end up. So even if we get this pushed all the way to where they're like, OK, next we're going to these facilities and we're going to look for these craft. I feel like the time between now and then those contractors or people who are hands on with these things are going to have time to move them to another location and we're going to have an empty warehouse and they're going to say, yeah, we went there. We knocked on the door. We didn't find anything empty warehouse. And then that's it for this disclosure push that we're doing right now. So I think that that probably is going to be how it ends up unless they immediately go there and knock on the door. Well, there's got to be some knocking. There has to be because Look, if they come out with this entire uh, phenomena of this Disclosure 2023 scenario, the question that I have is, who is going to be making sure that people are held accountable? Right? I mean, in the end, somebody has to be held accountable. And this is where you and I had this talk an hour ago about the military-industrial complex. Where does this go? Who is this going to affect? Do you really think as a private corporation, Lockheed Martin or Raytheon or Boeing or or anybody who has a test facility at Area 51 is going to give up any technology that they've been handed? They are covered because they cannot be accessed by Freedom of Information Acts. Right? They're private. You cannot hit up a private company under a FOIA request. So how do you get there? Uh, if they're subject to laws, then it's go- we're going to have to go the path of uh, creating these new laws to pressure them to a point to release information. But if they're not governed by the laws, then we're going to it's going to take someone from the inside to have a change of heart or just be willing to, uh, you know, make a name for themselves on behalf of humanity and come out with the information. That, it's so 
convoluted and complicated that, uh, you know, that's why it's such a long shot to, to actually get there just through these normal paths. It's going to, it's going to actually take someone to step from that side over to our side and do it for us. That's what it's going to take. I, I really don't think this political process that they're going through is going to be what actually gets us there. It's a lot, you know, it's, it sounds nice and it's enough to keep you preoccupied uh, while you're waiting for the next thing to happen. But if they're not governed by these laws, if they're protected by, by the, by the shadow government, then the normal political process, I don't think is, is going to work. So if you ask me, I don't think we get there uh, through the government. I, I, I really don't. I really don't. It, it's going to well, take someone to step out and do it for humanity. Let's read up on this for a second. The proposed amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act would direct the National Archives and Records Administration to create a collection of records on UAPs and UFOs. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to say something here. Because over the last number of months since the Chinese drones, I have taken a lot of heat, a lot of heat about banning UAP from this show. You notice how they, the government themselves are now separating UAPs and UFOs? Remember I told you to read between the lines that UAPs are not UFOs. UAPs are man-made. Do we not see that now? Let's, let's, let me read that line again. Okay, the proposed amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act would direct the National Archives and Records Administration to create a collection of records on UAPs and UFOs to be disclosed to the public immediately unless a review board provides reasons to keep them classified. Rob, doesn't that sound like UAPs are not UFOs? Yeah, and I totally agree with you. They definitely are trying to separate that. They're trying to muddy the waters is what it is. And for those who uh, who are not within ufology, uh, who look at that are going to think that UAP are are UFOs, and then they're going to point to UAPs being spy balloons or, uh, you know, adversary tech. So I think that it's a, it's a, it's a tool that they're using to muddy the waters. We know the truth as us within ufology, we know the difference, but for those who are just coming into this, they don't. So that's enough for them to, you know, and, and just to just to say, we we showed a poll on the show the other day, and this is kind of where the bright spot is: is that uh, the poll they just did the other day is fifty seven percent of Americans polled believe that the government is hiding uh, UFO secrets. There was only twenty one percent that said no. So, with that being said, twenty one percent would cover the skeptics. So the skeptics are only twenty one percent of the total public poll so they are the minority so the good thing is is that a lot of people uh most people believe that this thing is true and that ufos actually do exist so you know with that being said i think that you know it just and i, I just hate to sound like a broken record with that but i think it all goes back to humanity being aware of what's going on and then uniting to push this thing forward. So if we go, and I think I was going to say this at the break, but if we, you know, in previous times, we marched on Washington, we did all these things. We came together, million man March and all these other protests uh, that we did as humanity in order to get things pushed across the line. And I think this is no different. Rob G. from The Social Dig will be with us for the next half hour as we continue on with Space Out Radio tonight. Minus Tim Senor, who's having some internet issues, but it's been a good show nonetheless. We'll be right back on Space Out Radio right after this.
Random guy. What's Random happening? Random guy. Oh, he's in the chats. Random guy is here. The old RG makes the appearance here. Wow. I would, I would love to see Random Guy come on in and, and chat with your boy, man. Let me meet you for the first time, Random Guy. Let's let's do this. Uh, random Guy, uh, he, he's probably washing his hair at this point. <laughs> you know, who knows what he's doing? <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to hook up. Well, we are going to hook up. Uh, I'm supposed to go out there and meet him out in Vegas. We're going to hang out, talk about some UFOs and some other things. When are you heading to Vegas? Well, you know, I'm only about 200, a little over 200 miles away, so I'm there all the time. It, you know, it's just a matter of usually going down there for family things, but I have to right. set aside some time so we could just hang out. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. He's yeah, a good yeah. Dude. He is, yeah. he is. He, um, and uh, I don't know if you're aware, but it's going to be pretty hot out here tomorrow. It's going to be, hunt, well, where I'm at here in Bakersfield, it's going to be about 114 Fahrenheit. Wow. Yeah, Las Vegas is going to, we were going to go there this weekend, but it's going to be close to 120, so we decided not to go. Too hot. Ouch. I've actually been in Vegas when it's been 120. Yeah, it's a furnace. <laughs> yep. Yep. I remember that. Not good, not good. But uh yeah, I mean that's just what we deal with out here, but at least it's a dry heat. You know, I was talking to my co host Mateo. He lives out in uh Florida and they deal with a lot of that humidity over there and I d I just can't deal with that. That's too much for me. Yep. <clears throat> I agree. I can't stand the humidity. What kind of weather are you getting out there this time of year? Uh, our temperatures are actually dropping right now because we are having so much uh, thickness and forest fire smoke north mm. of us mm -hmm. that it's uh, it's really blocking the heat. We'd probably be right now. Uh, hold on, weather network. We'd probably be in that eighty-five to ninety degree range right now. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if you remember a few years ago here in California, we had those fires pretty bad. And, uh, you know, so I know what you're going through. It's it, okay. once you get that, all that smoke and then the heat with the smoke, yes, it's it's not good. It's not good. Yeah. Well, the good news is Monday it's supposed to rain here, which will take away a lot of that smoke mm -hmm. and uh, dampen the forest a little bit. And then uh, when Tim Senor arrives next week, uh, we're going to be um, we're going to be uh, right in straight sunshine, so uh, it'll be uh, it'll be nice up here. Not too hot though. Yeah. So you guys are going Bigfoot hunting? Is that what it is? Or well, there there might be some cameras involved, and I that's about as far as I could go with things right now. Mm, okay. Mm, yeah, I'm excited about it though. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Haven't made it up to Canada. I was so close. I've been up to uh, Seattle so many times, and the border's right there. And I, I was supposed to cross it one time, never did it. So isn't that, I think it's Vancouver right over the border, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I was supposed to go out there. Never made it, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I was going to go back in 2016. It wasn't looking too good out here in America, and I was moving. I was going to move to Canada, but uh, that didn't happen. Uh, we'd have taken you. <laughs> we'd, we'd have taken you. Yeah, you guys are nice people out there. Everyone I met in Canada is definitely very nice. Yeah, I. Uh, w my community is uh, is is uh, awesome. I love where I live. You know, I mean... There, there's a real motto in in my town where I live, which is, you know, you can come over, you can open up, open up my door, open up my fridge, grab a beer, sit around, have a chat, you know, just don't get into my shit, <laughs> you know? just don't get into my shit, and and that's the attitude. Like people here, um, 
my <laughs> take my daytime boss. You know, he hates the fact that I'm into all this. You know, but because he's very Christian, but you know, mm. he's my best friend, and we and we hang out all the time, and he's I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Thank you boss. Appreciate that, but uh, you know, it, it's just the way it is. Like my community, we don't care. Just you know, hang out and be a good person. That's it's hard to find these days. Hold on, right there, Rob. Rounded third, we're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Good to have you with us. My name is Dave Scott. Very much appreciate earning your listening ears. Reminder to all of you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the news wire, check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. Here we go. Right before the break, we were talking about this new law that may be coming in about UFOs. And we are joined by Rob G from the Social Dig Podcast and YouTube channel. Rob, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so continuing on, now that we have learned that now there is a difference between UAPs and UFOs, uh, this is what Chuck uh, Charles Schumer, the uh, Democrat, said about this new law that he wants to kind of see in. He goes, for decades, many Americans have been fascinated by mysterious objects and unexplained, and it's a long past time they get some answers. The American public has a right to learn about technologies of unknown origins, non-human intelligence, and unexplainable phenomena. Now, everybody, you can go read this on thehill.com. He goes on to say, we are not only working to declassify what the government has previously learned about these phenomena, but to create a pipeline for future research to be made public. Schumer said he is carrying out the legacy of former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada, who passed away a couple uh, years ago, who more than a decade ago pushed for funding for the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Narrative, uh, pardon me, Threat Identification Program. Lawmakers' interest in learning more about UFO sightings soared after that project became public and media outlets began publishing video clips of unexplained aerial phenomena captured by the cameras and sensors on military jets. After that project became public, senators, congressmen, uh, committees, and staff began to pursue this issue and uncovered a vast web of individuals and groups with ideas and stories to share. Well, it, to me, Rob, it's not about just the stories that are sharing. It's about getting to it. It's about figuring out how are they going to make any of this public? How do you think they're going to do it? Ah, well, I mean, you know, I guess the main thing he stated is that he's going to declassify. So whatever ends up being declassified, I'm I'm going to assume is going to be able to be seen by the public. Uh, he, he mentions uh, that this would be similar to the Kennedy assassination files that had been released uh, some years back, where obviously they didn't release everything, but they... They released a good chunk of information. So uh, obviously this the stuff that uh, we're hoping that the information that gets declassified is going to be something that's really worth even reviewing. But you know how just like with the FOIA request, certain things get uh, cherry picked and, you know, we may end up with a bunch of a bunch of uh, information that doesn't really take us anywhere. So it's, you know, it's going to, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what they actually declassify. But whatever they do declassify, I would assume is going to be uh, viewable for the public. Let's hope. Let's hope that, that they do get their way. I mean, but I mean, politicians are known for acting tough in the media 
but they roll over once uh, they get behind those closed doors and they start getting almost like a, a little bit of a tongue lashing from the military generals and other people of higher authority saying, guys, you, you can't be talking like this. Stop acting tough here. You know, I mean, we've seen it all the time. Yeah, I feel I just feel like and uh, we t uh, talked to Tom King about this earlier. I just feel like, you know, we've been here before, but things are different because we have laws now in place. We have uh, motion at the lower levels and in the Congress and in the Senate to where, uh, you know, it, it's it's not, it's more than just a person saying something or one person promising something. We have people promising things along with whistleblowers that are currently coming out and scheduled to uh, speak at this hearing upcoming. So I think we have a lot more things in place to kind of, you know, back up or shore up the fact that if he does come through with what he says, that there should be something to it. So this isn't like, um, you know, what we've experienced in the past where a promise was made. They went in to try to get it done. And they were stonewalled. Uh, there are a lot of people, I think, that are on the hot seat behind the scenes who are close to the information and the projects that are going on. And they understand that there potentially could be legal implications or ramifications for them not complying or, uh, you know, not doing what it is that they're being told to do. So I think I think that makes it a little different now. And I expect I would hope that we get uh, different results this time. Here's the thing that I find that is very, very concerning to me. It's this next line in this story, which says the amendment is modeled on the President John F. Kennedy Assassination Records Collection Act of 1992, which required the public disclosure of documents related to the former President Kennedy's assassination 25 years after its enactment, which means that if there's anything that is pertaining to this subject, those documents could be held for another quarter century before we even get a taste of them. I'll be 75 years old, man. I don't yeah. want this coming out at 75. Yeah. I mean, that goes back to then, do you need, the, the question ends up being, do you need to have confirmation from the government? And I guess that's really the big question. And, and I, I say no, I, I really don't think, what, what different space does the government finally telling you that these things are true? What difference is is, is it going to really make in your life when you already have so much evidence, uh, you know, from just regular people to show that these things are true and these things are going on? What, why do we need to wait on them to say, yes, it's true when we already knew the answer to that prior? So I don't think we have to wait all that time. Now, if they want to disclose this year, next year, 25 years down, down the line, that would be nice. But uh, who is it? Avi Lowe said the skies aren't classified. So, you know, all the, inf the same information that they have is the same information we already have as people. We just are looking for them to validate it, which doesn't, to me, doesn't make a lot of sense. And I think it's a lot of wasted time. And, uh, you know, it just... What what extra do you get from them saying, yes, it's true? Well, that is a question that is a million dollar question, my friend. We don't know. We don't know what they're going to tell us. We don't know what they're going to release. Do you, I mean, do you really think they're going to release what happened at Roswell that they got bodies? They don't even admit that there was a second crash that day at San Augustine. And yet we're supposed to learn what happens at Roswell or wherever else. Well, I mean, what more? See, when you look at so we'll say use Roswell, for example. So when you when you look at that, we are already under the understanding from their initial reporting 
that they recovered a crash disc. So that was the first thing they said. So we, we know that. We already know that. We know from reports that there were beans that were associated with that. So we know with Roswell, there was a crash disc. We know that they recovered bodies at the time. So what more could they give us on that sighting? The only thing that they could give us that we don't already have knowledge wise is showing us the bodies. So is that what we're looking for? Are we looking for them to show us the bodies? Because we have experiencers that have seen the bodies, live bodies. So what is it really that we're, you know what I mean? It's all, all we're going to get out of the Roswell is them saying, yep, it was a disc. Yep, we did recover bodies. We already knew that. You know what I mean? So it's like, what extra information that's worth anything will we get from any of the, all it is, is validation. And I don't know if validation is worth spending the next 20 years of your life spinning your wheels and watching reports and hoping uh, that they bring the information out. We already have it. And I think that once people realize that, then they'll stop using their time focusing on these things and actually get to what, you know, to taking the information we have and doing something with that. You know, I think it's the great distraction and they'll drag you out for your entire lifetime promising to show you something just right around the corner on the next report. Next thing you know, 10 years has passed. Look at now. Since uh, the the first UAP report came out, we have like almost two, three years that have passed. What do, what did we really get within that time? Nothing at all. So you do that two or three times. Next thing you know, 10 years has passed. And, and all you're doing is waiting for them to validate something that you already know. So we have to re-figure this out and reorganize our mission and i think that's where it gets to the humanity focused effort let's talk to the tim senors let's talk to the whitley strebers let's talk to the uh you know the kids from the aerial school let's go gather that data that's the data that we need we need the data from the people that are actually dealing with these experiences the question is who who gets that call? You know, I was once told that a lot of the people involved in the UFO phenomena within the government are experiencers themselves. I would do imagine. The do they get the call? Does somebody like David Grush and his people get the call? Who gets the call, man? I mean, th that stuff is icing on the cake. Um, you know, I think we'll have direct contact as far as maybe a mass sighting something similar to phoenix lights or aerial school i think we'll have one of those before we get the the government to say anything and they can't stop that from happening so that's you know that that's why you could spend your time you you could use your time better and be more uh helpful to the process by not worrying about they they have everything to lose to keep i mean uh yeah they have everything to lose to keep this a secret this is if they give us what what we're asking for things change for them you know as far as it, a lot of people say no it'd be business as usual i don't really think so i think things really change after that and i think they know that so they're going to try their hardest to never let it fully come out and, and for the people that are hanging on their every word waiting for it, you're just going to find yourself, like you stated, 75 years old, you spent your whole life waiting and you still didn't get it. And then how are you going to feel at that time? You know, when it's your time to go and you've spent all these years waiting for them to give you information and they just strung you along the whole time. You know, it's it's it it's sad to say, but. A lot of people spend their time doing that when they should refocus those efforts uh, and, and look, look in different places. We don't need their validation 
for something that we already understand and already know. It'd be nice to have the David Grushes and we're and those are the people that we end up praising uh, for taking that risk to come out and say something, but we shouldn't have to beg anyone to do it. You know, this should be just a, a, a human conscious, uh, someone who has compassion for humanity. And those are the people that we just wait for them to come out. If they do great, but we, it's not like we don't already know what we're asking them to show us. And I think that's the big thing at the end of the day. Oh, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. And and that's something that is, is something that we're going to be having to, to watch. There's so many different angles to watch. Let's uh, bring in president Zaddy here from our YouTube channel, Mr. Zaddy, what's going on? Oh, you're on mute, my friend. Oh, snap. Salute, Dave. How's it going? Good. How are you, my friend? I'm good, brother. You having a live call in today or what? We are. We are. And it's good to have you on here, my man. What's happening? Oh, you know, I just got off work. Just came to tap in with you. I wanted to say, F you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh i love my audience i love, love you, you, you too, mr zaddy i appreciate that back that's all i, I want to say bro <laughs> hey you are you're awesome and thank you where's home for you i am in houston texas hey. right on right yes, on sir. houston to canada man salute <laughs> it, yeah it's, it's about a two thousand uh no about a three thousand uh mile loop that's uh, okay. It's about, it's about two seconds in my UFO, you know. <laughs> well, you got a high quality beard and mustache combination going on. Uh, there. You know, I'm in my car right now. It's a little dark. You know, I'm going I'm to pull up on you one day. I'm going to be flashy. But, you know, I just wanted to say salute, man. We love what you do, Dave. We love you, man. We love all y'all at SOR. Keep doing your thing, bro. Thank you so much, my man. You take care. Drive safe, okay? All right, buddy. Salute, you chat. All right. That's President Zaddy there. How awesome was that? That was awesome. nice, man. I was saying they love you, Dave. They love you, well, Dave. I, I got to explain the for our audience who, who, with, with all of a sudden the F.U. Dave thing. This all started with our good friend Random Guy, who doesn't <laughs> believe he's an experiencer, but he's got aliens. He, he wakes up in the middle of the night one night after uh, being on the show, about an hour after. And he wakes up and he sits up in his bed and he looks at the end of his bed and there's two alien greys standing there. So instead of, you know, saying, hey, who are you guys? Or, hey, what do you want? Or panicking and throwing the sheets over his bed. He looks at these alien dudes and he goes, F you, Dave. Blaming me for it. Blaming me. And then puts his head back on the pillow. And then wakes up on the table getting his jaw worked on. But he doesn't have aliens, Rob. He doesn't have aliens. I was watching that episode. I do remember that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So now, our good friend, President Zaddy, every time he enters our chat room, he's like, F you, Dave. And I'm like, Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I love Random that, guy. Yeah, I do put mustard on my pretzels, random guy. He's got aliens. He's, he's definitely got, got aliens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's rolling his eyes right now. Shut up, man. Just shut <laughs> up. Three minutes to go here before we got to say goodnight to this impromptu get-together tonight on Spaced Out Radio. And, Rob, I got to say, man, thank you for coming on in. I am so excited. Oh, good day. I am so excited to have you on next week as a guest. You know, I, yeah. I, I've been looking we forward to talk to about some of the stuff that I have to show you and talk to you about for sure. Didn't want to let any of that out today. I want to know your experiences, man. I yeah. do. And hopefully I'll get an update from my uh, Sasquatch site this weekend. When we, uh, when we go back and uh, check things out. So I'll have an update on Monday for that. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to it, my man. Looking forward yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Had a had an epic sighting uh that I actually got on film, so uh we'll be able to see that. And and if you ask me, this 
smashes the Phoenix Lights. I mean, th if this sighting that I'm going to show you was more publicized, this would be the biggest thing that's ever happened. So we'll get to look at that. I think it's a. I think it's going to be great. Hey, do have, do me a favor if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell our uh, tell our audience where they can find the social dig. The social dig, as you see right behind me here, it's an excellent show that we have going on over at youtube.com forward slash at Mr. Rob G or just type in the social dig in the search. We just did a show tonight about alien contact. Uh, you know, what's the game plan? Where do we go? What 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 do we have planned for uh, contact? And we have a lot of other stuff. So definitely go over and check us out. And we will be seeing you again here on Monday. Well, I look forward to it too, my man. And to get your stories and, and why you got into this, I think it's always exciting for us to learn from new people exactly what is going on and why they decide to get into this crazy and hostile UFO world that we live in right now. The game is ever changing on a daily basis. And we got to remember. There are good people out there just like you, just like me, who are having some extraordinary experiences of the unknown, whether it's UFOs and aliens, whether it's ghosts and spirits in their house, whether it's like Super Duke and chasing Sasquatch with a romantic candle, you know, to have a uh, sit down dinner and some wine. You know, there are people who are having these. And the one thing about it is they're just telling you the truth. They're not making it up. Exactly. Listen, let them have their time. You don't need to believe it, but just don't put it down when they tell you. And that you is go. a good, good rule of thumb. Or you can just come on here and tell us about it because we believe all the woo. We <laughs> love the woo around here, and we're going to have more coming up here very, very shortly on Spaced Out Radio. Thank you, Mr. Rob G. from The Social Day. Yes, thank very you. Good. Appreciate you, and thank you to our callers who called on in, tell us their stories or ask their questions, and to Marie Cisneros. We're going to bring her back on. Once again, we get the technical stuff figured out. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god of South Special thanks to everybody listening in at work, at home, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone in our chat rooms tonight. YouTube, Twitch, LGAP, Facebook, Spreaker, LinkedIn, the Space Travelers Club, and on Twitter, at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyrighted by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us. Because together, my friends, we're watching. We own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes, the Wu train has docked for the night. But soon, my friends, we shall ride again. Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, we got room for them, too. Good night. There we go. He got the awesome, most awesome outro, man. Good Lord. What's that? Your outro, your uh, Bumblefoot, your out, the, the sh song that takes you out. I love it. Oh, I'm a musician, so I appreciate, you know, good music. And, you know, I got a guitar over here, actually, Dave. I was going to break it out for you, man. I'm Freaking learning, out, man. Learning Freaking guitar. Out, we well, I'm not great or anything right now, you know. But I got a... Uh, it's like a imitation strat guitar. So nice. yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna learn how to play that outro and I'm gonna play it for you. Oh yeah. 
And my man, Mr. B, he's uh, pretty badass. Yeah. Pretty badass. I miss him playing for Guns N' Roses. I really do. Yeah, so he was, uh, when did he leave the group? He left in 2014, uh, along with DJ Ashba, the other lead guitarist, when uh, Axel told him after the last residency in Vegas, he told the band that uh, there was going to be changes because him slash and, and Duff had decided to patch things up and then do a lifelong world tour. Yeah, so I'm a Guns N' Roses fan. There was no more room for Bumblefoot or or, or um, DJ Ashba there, unfortunately. And um, you know, I kind of, I kind of miss them because I know that, like, I, I love the original Guns N' Roses lineup. I've loved them since '87. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'll be honest with you. In my opinion, and I've talked to other people about this axel's band that he called guns and roses that played after slash and duff you know especially in the in the 2000s coming out of out of their chinese democracy album that band was tight mm-hmm. like tight and he made sure axel made sure uh that everybody in the band played the old songs exactly the way they were meant to be played. You know, there was no, you know, going off on your own tangent on a guitar solo right. or anything like that. And um, and so when I first saw them, it, you know, both DJ Ashba and, and Bumblefoot were, were playing with GNR at that time. Um, I was like, oh my God, like this, it sounds incredible. It sounds so tight. And I saw them seven times uh, or six times, six times, one, two, five, six. Yeah. Six times. No, five times. And then I've seen uh, the reunion tour twice. And I'll be seeing it a third time here in October. Um Taking my son this time. They're coming out there. Yeah, they'll be in Vancouver in October. Oh, okay, which is, which is cool. Yeah, it, yeah. It was a lot more in, intimate too. You know, like when they were playing the Hard Rock Hotel in Vegas. I mean, like they were right there, and it it was just an incredible experience. Yeah, uh, Tim Mothman, your goatee sucks ass. <laughs> Just like you know, your goatee sucks ass, Tim. Axel, <laughs> come on. He said, Axel. <laughs> come on. That's not very, very nice. Yeah, and I hate to say that about your goatee because you know I love your goatee. You know I love your goatee. And I know you're laughing right now. I know you are because you know you hit that sensitive point on me. You know? Bad Tim, bad Tim. <laughs> so, where in California is home for you? Um, Southern California. Um, I'm actually from Sacramento. So, shout out to Deb from Sac. Cause I'm from Sacramento, but I live in uh, Bakersfield. It's about an hour north of yeah. uh, L.A. Home of the Condors. Yeah, yeah, and Corn uh, is from here, and. Uh, we got some country bands. Uh, uh, was it uh, Buck Owens? Uh, I don't know Mer- what that is. Yeah, Buck Owens, the country. Yeah, <laughs> Merle Haggard. Uh, yeah, so it's actually a pretty decent town, you know. Uh, um, anything bad to say about Bakersfield, but from Sacramento. That's awesome. Sacramento. Yeah. So Bakersfield, I'm I'm just trying to get a map in my head here. That's about halfway down Bakersfield. Yeah, from from mm, it's it's about 99 miles from LA. It's less than 100. Oh, okay. We're we're right at the Grapevine. So if you're familiar with the Grapevine, we're right at the at foot of the Grapevine. Okay. 
Yeah. In uh, on the edge of the Mojave Desert. So when I go to Vegas, um, you know, I take uh, was it 58 going east and we hit Mojave. And Mo- I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, airport grave, the airplane graveyard. No, that's something that I've wanted to see. Oh, it's right here. Every time I go through, I pass. So I haven't, I'm going to stop and film there. You know, I always say that because we're passing all the time, but it is a sight to see. Just a like a, a jumbo jet junkyard. It's crazy. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. the, the, like, the, that's not the military graveyard. No, these are like commercial jets. Yeah, like 747s. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Just I'd as far like- as the eye can see, it's crazy. In the middle of the desert, it just pops up out of nowhere. Just all these old, old, uh, unused planes. It's crazy. Wow. And yeah, I guess of- they fly them there when they retire them. They fly <clears> them in. And then they just leave them there. That's how to get there. I guess with some of them, they they're actually still quite new, but because of budget cuts and everything, like you could have a five year old plane sitting in there. Yeah, yeah, plane. yeah. I mean, and you can go get. You need a nose cone, or you need a. You know, this is exactly where you go to get it. So it's pretty crazy. It's right by. Um, I think I think it's Edwards. Yeah, Edwards, I believe, is right there next to the uh, airport graveyard. I think it's in Mojave as well. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff around here. You know, like I was telling someone, I just found out that the uh, it's about a mile from me here in Bakersfield. There is a uh, warehouse where they built the, they assembled the U-2 spy plane. So back when it was top secret and they were testing they would do it at, I guess, Skunk Works or whoever actually made it. They would disassemble it, bring it here to Bakersfield to this warehouse and assemble it, test it out, all the uh, electronics, take it back apart, take it right over to our Meadows Airport and fly it from here, the pieces from here to Area 51. I just found that out, so I'm going to go down and film there too because the building is still there. And it's it's being uh, it's owned by some concrete company now. So, but it looks exactly the same as it did back then. No way. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of cool stuff out here. And I was, you know, obviously I'm out here with all the contractors, so I'm gonna look into doing some of that stuff too. Uh, put it on the channel. So, gonna have some interesting stuff coming up here. Looking at a map of California. Yeah. If you look, we're 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 oh, pretty so you're, much in the you're desert. Over by, you're over by where we broadcast on in Ridgecrest. Yes. Yes. I've tried to pick up the station from here. I looked it up, it was like ninety three point something and uh but I don't get it from here. Yeah, I tried I tried to see if I could hear it from here, but I couldn't. I tried to tune in. Yeah, yeah, because that's one of the reasons why Chuck wanted to get us on there is because, um, because of all the um, all the uh, uh, test facilities and manufacturers around there. Yeah, good programming for him, and he's actually well within a couple of weeks of us starting on Ridgecrest at Ridgecrest on KZFX, we were. Um, Chuck was getting phone calls from inside uh, the guys working, tuning us in to say, hey, it's about time we got something like this we could listen to. So wow. that was good. From the facilities? Yeah. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So good. Yeah. So that means they good. I'm glad they hear this then. They need to hear this. Those guys are the ones that need to hear this. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, oh, yeah, we have Vandenberg, I'm very familiar, this not too far from here as well. So I'm like right in the middle between Vandenberg and Edwards. So, yeah, it's a lot of activity out here for sure. But you got to get out there and film. So, you know, I'm going to gonna do that. When I was a kid, we, um, uh, every year we went in our motor home to, down 
to California. And uh, one of the things that being a, a Canadian kid and being a, an avi- a military aviation buff that I was back then, I loved being able to drive through the States. And I had a, I had a booklet of a list of all the aircraft that I would see. And I would make sure that I wrote them all down to see, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I'll never forget. I think we were in California somewhere and we came down this hill and there was like a bunch of old C-141 uh, star lifters that were taking off and in the daytime. And I, I was just freaking out. Cause I just thought this is one of the greatest days of my life right now watching this right yeah uh, you know daddy dad would he my dad's pretty cool he knew my love for it i remember he even took us uh when we were heading down uh into disneyland he he actually went out of his way and he drove down a little bit further down to el toro just so i could see the the marines uh base there and, and look at the jet fighters there i thought it was cool yeah, so you don't, I guess, well, I mean, you don't get a lot of activity up there, right? Just the, the you don't get any anything flying through where you're at? Um, Very rarely. Okay. Very rarely. I actually, um, 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 about two months ago, I saw two CF-18s fly over, but they were at altitude, like 30,000 feet. Yeah. You know? I don't even get a lot of airline traffic here. Like I'm lucky to see an airliner a day. You know, those big, uh, I don't even, I don't, I don't think it's the AC one thirty. you know, the huge cargo planes that carry tanks and yeah. The C five galaxies. Is, is that what it is? It's yeah. a huge, huge plane, but I get to see those. And I saw one. I mean, those things are so big. It doesn't even look like they're moving. Like, uh, if, if you can even imagine that, like, it looks like they're frozen in air. And it's crazy to see those things take off and land. It's, it's, oh, I know. Insane. They're totally crazy. Yeah, but I do, I get a lot of that out here, obviously, with all the bases we have out here. So we see things often. But the sighting I had was, which we'll end up talking about on Monday. We had, <laughs> there was, this is going to, it's, it was 47 of these objects that I filmed on a clear blue day. It was uh, 12 in the afternoon. It was about 108 degrees right over my head. 47 of these objects, which we'll end up looking at crazy day. These things disappeared into thin air, just gone. Gone. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of sight, you know, other people's sightings and this was so, man, it's, it's, it's hard to even, because once you see something, it's, you're changed forever. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's different. Oh yeah. And it, it, and then, you know, it's not, this isn't anything that could have been created by anyone here on earth. It just is impossible. So I had, um, I had some people look at it. I had Mick West look at it, uh, way back when it happened. It, was, it happened last August. So almost a year ago, I put it out on Twitter for the skeptics to devour it. And uh, Mick West did end up looking at it. And, and we'll talk about what he said, but uh, he did look at it. And um, I know what I, you know, that's what I guess this one James Fox had the movie, what I know what I saw. Because I know what I saw. And I saw it with my bare, naked eyes. And I saw the physical things that they were. And no one can tell me any different. So. We'll get to looking at that. But I think that's part of the problem. You get those people who, those armchair like Midwest, you know, shout out to Midwest though, but people who weren't there to see it and then they just give their opinion on what they think it is. I think that that bothers me kind of, you know, I don't know. Like, how can Uh, you... 
you know, Mick has his place too. I mean, yeah. he's he's uncovered a lot of bullshit, right? Yeah, yeah, he definitely has. But what I found out is that a lot of th- there. Well, I'll say a lot, but a number of things that have been debunked are actual sightings. And we'll t- we'll end up talking about why that's the fact. But there's um, there are based on what I saw, there are sightings that have happened recently that everyone looked at skeptics, non skeptics, and they all debunked the sighting. But the things that I saw were the same things that were depicted in those other sightings. So that told me right there that we have people out there that are debunking sightings that are actual sightings. And I think that becomes a problem because, um, you know, the ridicule that the person gets from presenting an actual sighting is uncalled for unjustified. And it's just because you have people that sit back and form an opinion on what they think it is versus taking the witnesses or the experiencers word for what they saw. So, you know, I think that becomes a problem. And and that's a guaranteed fact that there have been things that have been debunked that should not have been debunked. And I fully agree with you. I've gone through that in my own experiences where I I, I had one critic, uh, you know, critical of both me and he, and Samantha Moat. He's like, He's like, oh, you saw something with that lunatic? He goes, uh, yeah. He goes, I know your story's bogus now. I said, oh, uh, I said, you were there. You were, you, you were with, uh, you were in the forest with Samantha and I. Do you even know where Mission British Columbia is? Right. Yeah. But certain people just have to get that shot in. You know what I'm saying? It is sad. I mean, I expect that coming from skeptics, but when it's the problem I'm having is when it comes from non-skeptics, like how can you be a non-skeptic a person is open to the possibilities and you will, you don't even give that benefit of the doubt. You just, because maybe the video was a little fuzzy or the picture was from far away, then you say, okay, well, that's not that's not valid. And I think, uh, it's just bothers me when I see people within ufology who are people who are supposed to be open to the fact that the possibility, look at, look at something and debunk it. Yeah. And you I'm know, right well, yeah. Just the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. What's up chat. What's up chat. How y'all doing, man. Glad to see y'all glad to be here with y'all. Usually I'm in the chat with you guys talking crazy stuff so glad to uh to be here in front of you guys today it's gonna be awesome on monday uh we're gonna talk about the sighting that i'm kind of talking around right now but i promise you it's one of the most epic sightings that i am aware of um you know and I've, i've looked at a lot of them but Pretty, pretty epic. Pretty, pretty epic. Hey, Christine. Hey, Christine. Uh, I'm under Mr. Rob G. Uh, Actually, let me put something in the chat here. The social dig. And yeah, I would love, I mean, you guys, it, whenever you get the time, I know we're definitely on uh, Spaced Out Radio time right now. Whenever you get some free time, come on over and check out the channel. We have some awesome stuff over there. You know, we, uh, you know, we have pro-humanitarian uh, focus. So we try to cover things that benefit uh, the positive progression of humanity, um, you know, we cover some deep stuff. We have, I did a show on skeptic versus non-skeptic logic and, you know, the differences between 
uh, the viewpoints of hard skeptics versus uh, extreme believers on the non-skeptical side and how if you look at it, both of those sides are closed minded. But the we need, you know, in order to have this conversation between non-skeptics and skeptics, we need to meet in the middle and have that, you know, an open mind to the possibility. So we kind of get deep over there. We have fun, um, cover historical cases. Uh, you know, um, I think you guys would, would enjoy it. So whenever you get the time, if you haven't already subscribed, it'd be great if you did. We're a growing channel right now. Uh, we've been out for about seven months and um, have about 30, about 30 shows, complete shows over there. So if you guys get the time, check it out. Oh, the Vegas event six weeks ago. No uh, updates, no updates. Um, you know, if you and that's a, I have a video on that as well, where if it's the real video, you know, it was the video that was released where they show the 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 young man, uh, Angel and his dad and I guess his brother were in the backyard and they're by the fence. And they go in and come out. So I have a video where it was slowed down and they put a filter on it and you can see something inside of the forklift. I know everybody who commented on it or released a video, they were like, oh, look, there's something over here by the fence or look. No, the young man reported to 911 that there were beans in the forklift. The video that I have on there right now on my channel shows being what what looks to be beans inside of the forklift you can see eyes blinking you know you remember he said um big glowing eyes or shiny eyes or something like that you can see that in the video so the last thing that i reported on that was there was a podcaster called Doug Papa, I believe he has a podcast and he was uh, the one who had gone over to Angel's house and interviewed him prior to this all breaking out onto the news. So, you know, it's definitely something you guys should go check out. Oh, thank you, Paramar. I appreciate that. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for subbing. You won't be sorry. You won't be sorry. We have some great stuff uh, coming down the pipeline, too. Hey, Rob, do me a favor. Just say hi in the chat room so that way I can uh, make you a, a wrench if I haven't already. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, Deb. My pee came out just fine. <laughs> That way uh, you can uh, post your uh, your link. Oh, okay. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I'm here with the man. The man with the plan, Dave Scott, man. I, I Man, I got to tell you, I love, uh, you know, I, I understand you have a background in radio. I do. And you can tell, and I really love how you present and, uh, you know, how you keep your, your ship run tight. You know, it's kind of some of the things that I'm looking at. I try to implement implement some of those things into what I do and how you are a I, I don't know how you're able to oh thank you let me go ahead and close that okay I don't know how you're able to run the show and run the chat at the same time man what's the secret what's the secret to that how do you in the world do you do where is, is your screen <laughs> you right here I'll, I'll tell you the secret right now I if I'm looking at my camera right now I'm actually looking at the chat room. So is your, I mean, your camera's obviously in front of you. So do you, or is your screen below your camera or? No, my camera's up above. My camera is right there above my screen. Is it a webcam? Think. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 I have a different setup because I have mines off to the left and I don't like looking over there, when, you know, when I'm trying to get the chat. So. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna have to refigure this out. 
Oh, it'll come for you. But you're on top of it. I mean, you don't miss a beat. You don't miss. You're talking. Oh, I miss, you're hosting. I miss a lot. Don't don't kid yourself. <laughs> I, I do miss a lot. I'm like, man. You know, um, and trust me, uh, sometimes when there's blow ups in the chat room and people are like, you saw that. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I don't see everything. You know, yeah, I, I mean, hear about it. Yeah, I mean, fool. Thank you, Brown Dorf. I appreciate it. Uh, I would love to have you uh, see you, you know, on the next show coming up soon. Coming up soon. It's the yin to the yang. So we do it. We'll do it for Space Style Radio. Then you leave the social dig, come right over Space Style Radio, and you get your goods. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Said, Dev said Dave's a big brain multitasker. Yeah. I think uh, Tim, Oth- Tim Othman said, uh, no, it was a sovereign. Sovereign said that you were an alien. So. Which is uh, why you were able to do Moth this. Man, I, I will tell you this. He is one of the coolest dudes out yeah, there, man. I talked to him in chat. He does seem pretty cool. Yeah, he is He is a cool dude, man. He came to our Vegas party, and hopefully he comes to the Reno party uh, next year and and uh, makes, makes it out there. He's a cool dude. Yeah, I'll be in Reno, man. I miss your Vegas. We I had to cruise to Catalina, you know, my lady. So, or, or else I would have definitely been there to come out to meet the great Dave and, and random guy. Good old RG. And Tim, and, and Tim Bits, Tim Senor. Good old little Timmy Senor. Yep. <laughs> yeah, good old little Timmy Senor. Oh, and that's another thing. So, uh, anyone who hasn't heard Tim's story on his sighting, he was the first guest that I had on my show, and it's episode four, and he tells the whole story about his sighting. So he, Tim's been on the show a few times. He's, you know, comes by often, but the first time he came on, episode four, he laid out the entire sighting. So if you ever were questioning you know, what happened with Tim and, and what was, you know, I don't I don't know if he's gone into detail here, but he lays it all out on the line. So episode four on my channel, definitely go check it out. Yeah, he's got a crazy, crazy sighting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got him, you know, I, the questions that I asked him, you know, is really emotional. You know, he's really emotional and he's. He, he will admit that that it was an emotional thing and he's usually not really comfortable, you know, talking about it in most cases. But I definitely got him to open up and, and it was a really good interview. Yeah, he's pretty he's pretty emotional about that. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's. I guess it it can do that to you. I mean, it because it, it's life changing as it is. But then you know he he had that siding with his family. So, and then you know he go he he goes in even to talking about how it affected you know his parents and and his children and things like that. So he goes pretty pretty deep. Oh yeah. Oh, did you, Christine? You may have. I know that we did that back in January, I think it was. Early January. It may have been December, actually. Yeah. It was the fourth episode. It was, we just started, and Tim agreed to come on and, and gave me his whole life. His whole life story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, dude, I am going to call it the night here because I do All right. work in the morning. Rob, thank you so much for being here, dude. Oh, Very thank much. you for having me, Dave. And uh, we'll talk more on Monday. And I uh, can't wait to see you guys. Talk to you then. We'll see you then on Monday, bud. You take right. care. Oh, 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 oh. Well, there he goes. <laughs> thank you to uh, Deb, OB Flett, Surf Jair, Gizmo, and LM. For the super chats, there is no Jessica Jones this weekend. She's taking the weekend off to go look for some super soldiers. 
And uh, so you just got uh, Marquise this weekend, uh, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on Saturday and Sunday night. I will see you all very, very soon. Talk to you on Monday. Healthy, my friend. You too. You need bail money? Give me a call. Always, Dad. Take care. <laughs> you too.